Wouldn't it be nice if you could change things to suit you? Like changing your music. Oh, okay, let's try something else. Ah, perfect. With Sky Mobile, you can change your phone and your data plan to suit you. Join Sky Mobile, the UK's fastest growing network. Swap after first 31 days, 12 month days plan required. Mix sound effective after one month. Fastest growing 2021 2023. Verify sky.com forward slash mobile claims. Season C supply. Clyde One Super Scoreboard Podcast with Lucas Audi. The fully electric Q4 is now available on Motability. Discover it today. It's game day, and this is the home of Scottish football. It's Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Good afternoon and welcome to Clyde One Super Scoreboard on a potentially title-defining derby day in Glasgow. Celtic know a win will all but wrap up yet another Scottish Premiership campaign and they've got a full team to choose from. Philippe Clement says it's not a must-win for Rangers, but anything less than three points will surely be damaging. The sun is shining in Glasgow and this famous old rivalry takes centre stage once again in the company of Gordon Biel, Mark Wilson and Hugh Evans. The only thing that's hotter than the weather is... Is the game of football we are about to witness at Celtic Park. For me, it's perfectly straightforward. If Celtic win, they are the champions, no doubt. If Rangers win, I believe the shock is so seismic, it affects Celtic over the remaining two games and Rangers become the champions. That's how vital it is this afternoon. Brendan Rodgers, quite right to defend himself about using the word fun. It is only fun in games after all and Philippe Clement he's as bad a tipster as I am if he thinks this is not a must win game for Rangers it most certainly is a must win game for Rangers oh without doubt if Philippe Clement thinks that he is at the wrong club in the wrong city at the wrong time because these games are must win every encounter they, they face each other but today is one of the biggest ones we can remember in a long time if Celtic win it and they are favourites to win it then the league title is all but theirs. But Rangers, they must get something out this game this afternoon to keep their title hopes alive. Can't wait for it to start. Yeah, I'm, I'm with the boys. I think everybody's looking forward to this. We've uh, had a great build-up this week talking about it. Um, both sets of fans very confident. If it's anything like the last game, then we're in for a treat. Indeed we are, the scene is set We've been building up to this one all week and beyond And of course the pre-match questions always centre around Who will play, what will the teams look like Will the manager get the big calls right Andrew McLean is there alongside Marvin Bartley And Andrew's going to bring us the teams Yeah, it's an absolutely glorious day here in the east end of Glasgow And no matter what happens It'll be significant in the title race. A chance for Celtic to spark a title party with 60,000 invites if they win. Even a draw is favourable. Or can Rangers blow the whole thing wide open with a victory of their own? Big decisions to be made by both managers when it comes to team selection. For Brendan Rodgers, it was all about the wide areas. Who would start for them? Well, it's James Forrest and the returning Dyson Maeda to get the nod out wide. So it's just the one change for them from that victory here against Hearts last weekend. It's Nicholas Kuhn that drops out the starting lineup and Dyson Maeda comes in. So Joe Hart starts in goal, his 150th Celtic appearance today. The back four, Alistair Johnson, Cameron Carter Vickers, Liam Scales and Greg Taylor. The midfield three, Callum McGregor, Matt O'Reilly and Rio Hattati. And it'll be James Forrest and Dyson Maeda either side of Kyogo. The substitutes being Palma, Ida, Kuhn, Navrotsky, Iwata, Bernardo, Ralston and Welsh. Well, Philip Clement, I think, had a few more headaches coming into this one. Ben Davies pretty much has to start because Conor Golton and Leon Valiant are still out injured. It's Conor Barisic who gets the nod at left back, even though Red Van Yilmaz is fit enough to be on the bench for this one. And Tom Lawrence is prepared to talk Cantwell in midfield. So the two changes for them, Balogun and Cantwell drops out, in come Davies and Lawrence. So it's Butland in goal for them, James Tavernier, John Suter, Ben Davies 
and Borna Barisic are the back four. John Lundstrom and Mohamed Diamandi, the two holding midfielders with Dujon Sterling, Tom Lawrence and Fabio Silva in behind Serial Dessas. The substitutes, McCrory, Yilmaz, Cantwell, Dowell, Wright, Roof, King, Raskin and McCausland. The referee here at Celtic Park is Willie Collum. The VAR at Clydesdale House is Stephen McLean. Marvin Bartley alongside me. What stands out to you from that team news today? Yeah, definitely surprised with, with Sterling starting out wide. I didn't think he would play. I thought he'd play in the midfield three, especially with Celtic back to their strongest midfield three now. So I thought his energy in there, his physicality would have been used. But listen, he was going to play it somewhere on the pitch, but it seems he's going to be right midfield um, ahead of James Tavener. Yeah, and we're here. It's not only bright and warm, it is it's hot, it's very hot, isn't it? Could that have a, a factor in the game today, do you think? Yeah, I think it will have a factor. Um, more on Rangers than Celtic, if I'm honest. You know, Celtic, I expect to dominate possession. Um, Rangers, you know, I think, will sit in a shape and then try and press when it gets probably to the mid-third. So, even looking at their warm-ups now, you know, you, you look at the Celtic warm-up and the ball zipping around absolutely everywhere. You know, for the mistakes made, the players react instantly. But just watching Rangers, it seems, you know, the ball's going off quite a lot. And you see the coaches constantly stepping in and trying to encourage them. So whether there's a nervousness in that camp or not, I'm, I'm unsure. But even watching that, you know, Rangers look a lot more shaky in their warm-up than Celtic do. Well, it has that big game feel here at Celtic Park. Of course, it is 60,000 Celtic fans in the stadium for this one and kickoff is not far away at all no surprises really in the Celtic team Mark Wilson the one debate this week what would he do with the wide options I think it's the most predictable answer is that yeah. Fair? yeah and I think it's the right option yeah we did discuss it midweek we've had a lot of calls on it and what he should do but I think when James Forrest has come into the side at this late stage in the season and had such an impact on it and playing well and you mentioned the other night Gordon Brendan Rodgers you know, continually speaks about him and the influence he's having at this time, I think it's the right choice. Now, he's got the attributes. He may not be as young as he once was, but he certainly came good at the right time. And he's got the pace and the drive, and he knows the way to go in these fixtures as well. He's going to be a big player for Celtic today, but on the opposite side as well. Maeda had, what, 30 minutes against Hearts. Everybody expected him a few weeks ago to be out for the season but he's another crucial addition and we all know how he plays against Tavernier. That is going to be an interesting battle all day long down that right-hand side. By contrast, Gordon mm. D.L. Philippe Clement doesn't have loads to choose from. There are still, I can see already, Rangers fans who are not delighted with the team he's picked, but he's certainly got a lot less to choose from if you look at that injury list. I'm surprised at the team he's picked, I've got to say. Um, but look, he's went for an attacking team. He's only tweaked one or two things. Big day for Davis, obviously. He's not played a lot of football. Come on for Ranger Balligan last week. Got his goal. Lawrence, that was a question mark. Hammer can't well. I thought he might have went with the two of them. He needs a win this afternoon. Uh, but he's stuck by that formation. Uh, and it's got to be very interesting. Big day for Dessers. I know that he gets a lot of talk about his missed chances. Could this be his day today? If Rangers have any chance and they do create chances, the guy has got to hit the back in it. Well, for me, it's all almost too good to be true for Celtic. Rangers with the players missing that you alluded to, Gordon. Celtic, everyone synchronised. They've all come at the right time for Celtic uh, with James Forrest enjoying this Indian summer with Maeda back from injury when he was expected to miss the rest of the season. In the midfield, Hatati, O'Reilly, McGregor, the strongest midfield that Celtic can possibly play. They haven't had that many games together this season, but they are back and they are ready for this. Everyone's ready. Now, I think so much goes into this week and it is almost showtime, but we're going to hear from both managers next. Clyde One Super Scoreboard with Call Robert Accident Repair. They'll collect, repair and deliver your vehicle, providing a hassle-free service. The team with the biggest support in Glasgow and the West. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. 15 minutes to kick off in the east end of Glasgow. A blazing hot day, would you believe, in the city. And the stage is almost set for Celtic against Rangers. Let's hear from the managers. First up, the home boss, Brendan Rodgers. It's a great opportunity. You know, that's, that's what you know, stands in front of us. You know, we have that opportunity to to do that but like you say nothing will be won we need to go and perform well we need to work hard we need to be intense and uh, 
we need to ensure that our, our game is at a good level. We'll have an amazing support, which will just uh, take us through the game and that wave of emotion. And hopefully, we can uh, entertain the, the supporters as well, you know, on the field. But um, yeah, primar- primarily the job is to to get the three points, and uh, if we can do that, it puts us in a in a brilliant position with two games to go. And we throw the phrase must win around quite regularly in the build-up to many games. It seems to apply heavily to this one for Rangers, but not for Philippe Clement necessarily. I don't totally agree with that. If you have a draw there, you still can become champion. Even if you lose, but that's a really, really long shot and too long shot for me. But uh, with a point also, but we go full for the three points. Clear. Very, very clear. Doing that, then you can... uh, make an incredible comeback in that way and and you can make a really big statement also Marvin Bartley I know we get hung up on words is it or is it not a must win for Rangers yeah it's most definitely a must win I think Clement's coming out and obviously trying to protect his players and maybe take a little bit of pressure off them I think within that dressing room in no uncertain terms we tell them we need to go and win this game of football um, you know a draw is just not good enough but you know the remaining games they have to go and win it and the players will know that as well Regardless of what the managers say to the public, I think all week they'll be building up to this game. No need to come here and take three points. Yeah, just let's delve in a bit deeper on the, the teams. We've, we've already picked out the, the kind of main talking points from each. How does that transpire on the pitch for you then, Marvin, in terms of battles and, and what areas could be key today? I think the midfield three for, for Celtic. You know, Rangers need to find a way to get in and around them. You know, with those three starting, they've only lost one in 30 games. That tells you all you need to know. But when they play, Celtic tick. Also, a lot's made of kind of the Tavernier Maeda um, battle that will go on today. And, and don't get me wrong, Tavernier does go forward and Maeda does ex- exploit those spaces. With Suter playing on the right hand side, I think could be a little bit more aggressive with his positioning. But for me, it's important that John Lundstrom helps out in that area as well. You know, he needs to be disciplined today. You know Tavernier is going to go forward, so it's so important that Lundstrom plugs those gaps and doesn't just leave Suter trying to go out there because nothing worse than a centre-half when you've not got a holding midfielder who's going to cover you if you go wide. He doesn't want a massive gap between himself and uh, Ben Davies at centre-half. So Lundstrom at times is going to have to plug in as, as a centre-half, which will allow Suter to be a little bit more aggressive because you know going the other way, I think Tavernier, I think it's six goals in his last, or five goals, one assist in his last six games against Celtic. They need him going forward. We know he's not the best defender. Listen, it's not anything new, but going forward, he's massive for Celtic. So they need to allow him to, uh, sorry, for Rangers, they need to allow him to do that. Sounding lively over there already. Um, and look, Marvin, I think because of the head to head record this season, because of the fact Celtic are favourites, there was perhaps a, an expectation that Rangers might try something different in terms of personnel it doesn't really look like that but can, can they do something within within that game within that shape within that personnel to to try and unsettle Celtic better than they have well the manager clearly believes that they can and that's the most important thing sometimes it's difficult when you're the manager if you keep chopping and changing what you do and the players start to think do you really believe in it because let's be honest Celtic and Rangers are judged when they play each other they should be blowing everyone else away in this league you know Rangers haven't done that of recent but, you know, when you come to these big games, if you're going to start chopping and changing what you do and what you really believe in, you know, the players can start to sense a nervousness within you. So I think Clement has to stick to his guns. They have to find a way, Gordon, to almost tinkle what they have been doing against Celtic because they have to win this game of football today. You know, maybe he thinks the substitutes are going to be more important than the starting players. That, that happens at times. Maybe that's why Sterling's starting that wide, wide, uh, wide right position. Um, you know, I thought they would have gone with an out-and-out winger there. They haven't. Um, but, you know, maybe the last 30 minutes does freshen it up in that area. It's the bit that we can only really speculate on, Hugh, and listen to that place. And it's one-sided, obviously. We've been through this many times. Only Celtic fans in there. What are your theories as to what that does to the fixture today? Well, it's the chance for the Hollywood finale for Celtic and Brendan Rodgers at the end of a tumultuous season for the manager. Not wanted by a section of the Celtic support, very much wanted by every Celtic supporter today, to win the three points, which would, barring a miracle, see Celtic become the league champions. It's a huge day, and the supporters know they can play their part. As I said, with Rangers' problems, it's almost too good to be true for Celtic. However, on Old Firm Day, you have to make dreams come true. They won't come true at your behest. So the Celtic players 
have to take advantage of those 60,000 fans willing them to do well and I think the start to the game is crucial Celtic took 21 seconds to score at Ibrox last time out they've been looking for a big start to the game because if they allow Rangers to make the big start pandemonium will turn to the level above pandemonium at Celtic Park yeah, it's, it's all this interest that made us, you know, a full house for the home team. And psychologically, how does that translate to the players? And I think early in the season, it keeps a whole load of pressure on the home team. And I think we've seen that in recent games and, and the performances. And then you see what it does when you lose a goal. And I'm thinking early on at Ibrox this season, how the Rangers fans reacted to that. They were in a different place at that time. And it could have went similar for Celtic on this occasion. However... There's a real, there seems to be a real togetherness in these past few weeks with the Celtic fans. Hugh's right in pointing out that Brendan Rodgers wasn't wanted by a section of the, the Celtic fans. And I think that's followed him throughout this season. And he's had to be defiant and he's had to do post-match press interviews and, and fight his corner. But in the last couple of weeks, the atmosphere's changed and I think that makes the dynamics and the psychological battle for the Celtic players a bit different I think they can feel that the crowd's behind them but Hugh is also right it's how you start the game it only takes a bright start from Rangers or an early goal from Rangers and that could deflate the atmosphere so start is huge for both sides yeah I don't think there'll be such a thing as the old cliche silence the crowd Gordon because even if Rangers do get an early goal I think Celtic fans will be right behind their team I think Mark's right they're sort of getting that bond together they know how close it is to the winning line but for Rangers it's, you've got to be a big character you've got to come out there and know that everybody's against you you've got to work as a team do your running do your work for your teammates and hope for the best but I just think we're in for a fantastic afternoon football yeah I can sense it already Marvin there is an expectation in the air and that is probably an understatement yeah massive expectation and you know it's really filling up now in here and it was amazing even when they came out for their warm ups you know the, the Celtic players obviously cheered and the Rangers players actually did their warm up in the centre of the pitch because they were booed you know and it wasn't even full but there's a massive expectation from the people around us you know, everyone's on their feet now, they're, they're joining the songs, they're clapping, and the Celtic players will come and feed off this. Like the, the guys in the studio are saying, it's so important that Rangers start this game well. The last thing you want to do is concede an early goal within this game, you've got no fans here, it'll be a long old afternoon for them if that happens. Listen to that atmosphere, it is loud, it is building up nicely in the east end of the city. And we will be right back to Celtic Park because after a long old season with many twists and turns, it is kick-off time and it is coming next. Clyde One Super Scoreboard with Call Robert Accident Repair. Fault and non-fault insurance specialist. Robert will even pay your excess. The winning team all season long. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Here come the teams at Celtic Park taking us up to kick off Marvin Bartley and Andrew McLean. Yeah, well, it's never an old firm game that passes that doesn't have anything on the line, but this, as you can hear, is elevated to the next level. Celtic with a chance to pretty much get both hands on that Scottish Premiership trophy with a win in the sun in front of a fully home support. The supporters here would have been dreaming last night what that full time whistle will be like if they manage to get that victory, but can Rangers come here and spoil it and really pile on the pressure in the title race with just two games remaining, looking over to my right a huge display over in that corner that says we will be your strength fear nothing, the Celtic supporters clearly feel that they have a huge part to play in this game as well as they try and urge their team to get over the line and win this Scottish Premiership trophy this season Marvin Bartley the atmosphere is just building and building and building yeah it's absolute electric now as you say the Celtic fans know they have a massive massive part to play and everyone within the stadium is willing to do what they have to do to make sure their team wins this game of football today it's going to be absolutely massive you know what a spectacle for Scottish football for the people who are watching it fantastic for us being here you know unfortunately for the boys in the studio they're not here with us but yeah it's really electric and the songs are starting oh, right, when 
<laughs> Sorry, mate. Well, there is a big game like this. Often people talking about setting the tone, starting well, how crucial the first few minutes were. We look back to the last game between these two sides. It wasn't the first few minutes. It was the first few seconds. It is vital for both these sides that they make that quick start and try and set the tone for what's ahead. Yeah, more so for Rangers. I, I genuinely believe that. You know, Celtic score early here, it's game over. If Rangers score early here, Celtic will still believe they can come back into this game and go on to win this game and have all your own fans within the stadium you believe you can do absolutely anything, it's so important that Rangers start this game, well if they don't as I said earlier, it'll be a long old afternoon Yeah well Celtic just in their huddle at the moment, Rangers waiting about for them to break out from that so they can get the game underway, we've talked a few uh, about a few of the, the choices in this game of team selection but two guys that the teams will hope will be vitally important at both ends of the pitch, Kyogo and Cyril Dessers. It's quite a curious case because Cyril Dessers has outscored Kyogo this season, but he certainly had his critics, whereas Kyogo maybe hasn't always hit the heights this season that we've seen of him in previous campaigns, but with seven goals and seven games against Rangers, these Celtic fans will be expecting him to come out and be the man to make the difference today. Yeah, exactly, and he'll five underneath that. He'll know what he can do against Rangers. Dessers, there's more pressure on him than Kyogo for me. As you said, seven goals and seven games for Kyogo. Dessers needs to make sure it's one in two chances today because he won't get one in four. Well, Tom Lawrence is standing over the ball and we are underway at Celtic Park. Clyde One Super Scoreboard Goal Flashes with M&D Green Pharmacy. For men's health, get advice and private prescriptions from qualified pharmacists. The last one a few weeks ago was billed as the biggest derby in over a decade. Well, goodness knows what size you would attach to this one. We are underway at Celtic Park. We've got our first free kick of the afternoon. John Souter, a judge to have thrown an arm across the face of Kyogo inside the centre circle. Don't think there was loads in it, but he does hold, sort of hold Kyogo back by the face, which uh, isn't allowed. No. You may be surprised <laughs> to find. And before because by this made that we had a goal mm, by yeah. this stage in the last game so very quickly it's disappointing already it's a, Eddie, a, it's a slow start uh, Hugh Keevans Mark Wilson Gordon Dale give us your predictions please Celtic 2-1 Celtic 2-0 I'm going 2-2 two, two. Two all a draw for Gordon DL. Well, Celtic are in the penalty box already. It's that experienced campaigner, James Forrest. <gasps> and it's so close to an opener within the first minute. Again, extremely close. James Forrest flashes it across. I think it was John Souter yes. who makes the block. It almost ended up in the back of the net, but not quite a let off for Rangers inside the opening minute, Hugh Evans. Well, James Forrest, uh, really, oh, the Indian the summer. Sorry, Hugh, just to describe it again better than I did the first time, John Souter deflects it off of Jack Butland. Yeah. It almost goes From in the back yards. of the net. Yeah. yeah, it's a fantastic start. Uh, getting feisty as well. Callum McGregor and Tom Lawrence involved there. Smiling through it all though But uh, it is what we expect it to be Hell for leather from the word go That's not a real smile though is it Mark? No, no, no That's that that smile of (laughs) Callum McGregor was giving him a bit there Tom Lawrence just had a little chuckle But you can quite clearly see You know, a couple of free kicks early on Rangers players quite aggressive in their press And obviously that's a directive from the manager That's the way they need to be but seeing the chance back again, it's a great ball from oh, Forrest. I mean, Shooter's off the face. A button. Yeah. And, and do you know what, Gordon? Sometimes you could say Brendan Rogers had his hands in the air. He thought it was in. As good as it was by Dyes in Maeda, there was clearly a, a, an element of luck involved about mm. the opening goal at Ibrooks. Well, you could, you could say that Rangers got that luck back there because it's off John Souter's foot, off Jack Butland's face. And away to safety. If you're going to do, get anything here this afternoon, you've got to have a little bit of luck. And Rangers certainly got that because, as good as Butlin is, he knew absolutely nothing about that. So they've got away with one. They just need to be careful. And you know what? It's one of the key battles. Oh, we kind of it is frantic. Yeah, we we signalled James Forrest up against Barisic. Now I'm surprised. I know Yilmaz has been out, but Barisic in the team. <sighs> He's got to know that James Forrest has made a career out of shifting the ball mm-hmm. down the line. He's got two Rangers players inside him. He's got to shut off the line. So James Forrest will be encouraged by that start. And Rangers just need to be careful. But that's 100 miles an hour. Rangers have done well to win it back on a couple of occasions. They do look bang up for this. Fabio Silva tracked out Alistair Johnson all the way infield and took it off him and tried to launch an attack in the early stages. And that's going to be... And there's Johnson taking it off Silva now. So it's going to be an interesting battle. Forrest has come inside of Barisic and just can't quite find the pass. They, look, they always start at 100 miles an hour yeah. anyway, and this is no different. Well, you know, the, the, they look both sides 
of players as if they've been shot out of a cannon. James on Forrest the on the left foot over the bar. Not his strongest. But I tell you what, how easy was that for yeah. Celtic to get out from that throw in? James Forrest just a little cross over. Silva, just no idea. He's came over his shoulder. And Rangers lucky, it's on his left foot. Doesn't get it in target. Yeah, they switched off, Mark. They switched off. Um, that's a warning sign. They've got to watch what they're doing here. They can't afford to give Celtic any encouragement by another early goal. So Rangers go direct from the goal kick, as you might expect. What Philippe Clement doesn't need, Gordon Diel, is Greg Taylor winning an aerial battle against Dujon Sterling. That that won't be in the plan. If you're going to go long to Sterling, it's on the assumption that he uses his physicality over Greg Taylor but yeah. here come Rangers yeah uh, Rangers try to get forward and they're certainly committing players forward you see Silva there Barisic that's a good ball in <sighs> oh that's good never defending never let off for Celtic because as I was saying Sterling did then come in yeah. at the back post headed one across just couldn't quite fall for a Rangers player but that would have been a heart in mouth moment for those Celtic fans that, Mark but that ball to the, the back post it always catches Celtic out Mark yeah without doubt um, and by the way Greg Taylor, lucky Carter Vickers in a good position. I thought Dessers was just going to turn it in. Sterling does well, that's why he's in the team. Bit of physicality at that back post. Great but defending, I've got to say. Carter Vickers? Oh, yeah, good defending. He puts himself in a good position to make sure that he gets rid of the danger. But what a pace this game is. Alistair Johnson, I think, is complaining that the ball is flat. And you know what, How I many times has this happened? happened quite a lot yeah. this season. They'll puma balls. It happened at, I mean, other sportswear brands are available. Let's not blame them entirely. In case their balls. It, might no, people, uh, it might be the people that blow them up, though. Yeah. Um, and skills, actually. Sorry, my apologies. Skills, sorry. Yeah, give skills a bit of credit. Uh, but that'll be a tactic the Rangers are looking to use. They're, they're thinking Sterling back post against Craig Taylor. He's got the advantage mm. there and then work off the second ball, but good defending by skills. In Paisley a couple of weeks ago, St Mirren Rangers, this happened with the balls. There was a few complaints. But anyway, we're back up and running. Let's not dwell on that for too long. Yeah, Celtic have to be aware of that. Oh, there's uh, that touch from Dyson and Maeda. Yeah, just takes that's... him away from James Tavernier and he tries to put it in. It's going to be a corner Celtic. You can imagine the roar that that will get from the crowd. Dyson Maeda in the side exactly for that. It's a brilliant first touch inside Tavernier. Just opens up the pitch for himself. And he tries to play that ball quickly across the face, cut out for a corner. Celtic going short from the corner, but it didn't look like it was done with much planning initially. Mm, but I have it. to say, it's a really... Oh, well, wow. wow. I don't think that it, was from uh, the training ground that, no do you not think so? It, no it, 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 it then, yeah initially and then Greg Taylor's pass was wild James Forrest left footed tipped over this time another He's, corner he fancies it this yeah, afternoon doesn't yeah, he? he's, he's absolutely thriving on this re-emergence that he has enjoyed he's the, the new darling of the fans you, I think I think he fantasies taking Barisic yeah, I, I listen, think, I think how, he's looked how at confident that. do you need to be to hit two shots with your weak foot Fo from miles out in mm -hmm. the first six minutes of the game that tells its story doesn't it? Yeah, there's a corner kick here. It's a, they'll yeah, not take this one short. Straight in by Matt O'Reilly, but it's a poor yeah, ball. It's over poor. everyone and out for a goal kick. Yeah, that is poor. Um, but it's a, a bright start from, from both sides, you've got to say. You'd expect Celtic to take the game to Rangers, but Rangers, just with that opportunity, and they, they worked it through the, the little areas yeah. into the wide area before they cross it into the back post for Sterling. So they're showing a level of composure as well and it's you, funny though because people always talk about the risk and reward of playing it out from the back but see equally if you're going to go direct like Rangers and you get it wrong twice Jack Butland's just booted it out the pitch yeah. Fabio Silva couldn't get on the end of that one so it's alright going direct Mark but it's not that much safer if you keep doing well, that well uh, listen it just needs to be accurate into an, an area that gives your wide players the opportunity to get onto it but twice they oh, have wow that's brilliant from Rio Hatati. but this pass mm. just probably a bit ambitious Maybe get a bit carried away, the roar, no doubt, because it was a beautiful touch from him. Uh, and he's bundled over, free kick Celtic, dangerous position. If it was at the other end, oh, Tavernier. You're in Tavernier territory, maybe it does favour a left footer slightly, but Tavernier mm. hits them from everywhere. It looks, yeah, it yeah, looks like Rangers have, have decided to put Lawrence on McGregor, but sometimes it has to go to skills, and all of a sudden, Hatati and McGregor have got the space to play. They've got to watch that. Mar, Big Marv said midfield battle is really crucial this afternoon. Celtic not known for having loads of free kick specialists from this range. I can't remember too many finding their way directly into the back of the net. Right. And now a word from our podcast sponsor, Lookers Motor Group. They have Jaguar, Land Rover and Volvo showrooms across Glasgow and the West. So you can find the new or used approved car that is right for you. Land Rover showrooms can be found in Motherwell and Darnley. And Jaguar, Volvo and Land Rover showrooms found in Hillington. Right now at lookers.co.uk, you can browse and shop 24-7, value your 
your part exchange Order and take delivery from the comfort of your own home Check out lookers.co.uk To get your new or used approved Land Rover, Jaguar or Volvo today Or even pop into the showroom local to you Now, back to the podcast Hi, it's Tim Burgess with a special announcement About my listening party on Absolute Radio So far we've heard stories behind classic records By New Order, U2, The Kinks, Def Leppard, Catatonia Tis Fear, Simple Minds, The The and a great band called The Charlatans. I swear I didn't write this. Well, I'm really pleased to say that I'll be back with new episodes and new listening parties. So search Tim's Listening Party wherever you get your podcasts. Like, subscribe, and stay tuned for season four and more stories behind iconic albums. James is locked out of his house. <laughs> he was taken out the bins when the door blew shut and now he's stuck there in just his pants and an apron. <laughs> He had a lasagna in the oven, so that'll be charcoal soon. And his new girlfriend's on the way, with her parents, to meet him for the first time. But with tons of original titles from his favourite comedians, he's laughing through it with comedy on Audible. Subscription required. See audible.co.uk for terms. Really will fancy it. In the tent, yep, I'm sure he will. He's certainly got a good shot from distance. It's always funny that we're... Players shoot well from distance, but it doesn't always translate to yeah, a good free kick taker. Free kick yeah, it's such Kyogo's a spacious area. Well. Oh, Kyogo fancies this. Yeah, it favours a left footer. It's just on that side, oh, but don't know. Only just. I think he's going right foot here. Yeah, Kyogo might just fancy it. Maybe and not. It does give Jack Button something to think about? He's lining it up like Jack Nicholas. Yeah, I've got to say that it's really slain that legs up. I think Kyogo's going for us. Oh, no yeah, matter. Really left footed. Oh, oh, just wide. I think Button maybe had it. Mm. Is it one of those that looks, what, that looks power. closer? I don't know, I had a lot of power in that. Oh, Jack Button's no, never yeah, getting yeah, that's, there. That's a bit closer than I thought, I must say. The crowd behind the goal think it's a goal. Nah, it's uh, always going away. It's always going away. It's, I, I, I think that if that's on target, I think Button's going to cross that mark. <laughs> what? All day. Not a chance. All day long. The power on that, not a chance. All day long. The Rangers going direct again, and it's that second ball sometimes, but... Liam Scales and John Lundstrom just exchanging a bit of head tennis as Kyogo comes and gets involved. Two Rangers players collide oh. with each other, and I think someone's got a sore one. Diamandi, I yeah. think it is. Um, but Rangers do play on Alistair Johnson and Fabio Silva. Johnson tends to like that physical battle. It's going to yeah. be a tough shift on bit that of, regard bit for of Silva. History there between the two of them from the last game, and I'm pretty oh, sure Alistair like Johnson it, yeah. built all throughout that game. Remember, every tackle, you know, Silva seemed to go down. Johnson was booked early on into the game then penalty kick wow, Celtic brilliant. have got out of Rangers press so so easily and Greg Taylor is now f- trying to feed Maeda down by the corner flag that's a good tackle James Tavernier yeah it gave him a lot to do I know he's got bags of pace but sometimes you've just got to get a nice way to ball there but Tavernier will feel better about you Sally get a good tackle in there how good is that from Celtic slash bad from Rangers Mark how easily that press was broken well, if you're going to press, you've got to do it as a full team, full unit. And if there's one missing link, that's what happens. And Celtic are very good at getting out. You know, the movement's great. Execution of passes are brilliant. And they're out the other side really quickly. But Greg Taylor does it right. Greg Taylor there, it seemed to be uncertain with the pass yeah. to Maeda. And that's what led to Tavernier getting back in. Yeah, and Celtic don't make the most of it. It then ends up in a goal kick. But it's good pressing again. And it's just as you would expect. It's just sort of frantic, the... Chance inside the opening minute is all we've really had. Celtic have had a couple from distance. There was a, that bottle, and that's another foul mm. on Callum McGregor, was it? As he nipped in, took it away from Diamandi. Yeah, I think McGregor's just a bit sharp for him. Uh, McGregor he reads can, it. I'm a, you know, working in this show, you get used to lip reading. Callum yeah. McGregor sent you well to call him. I'm away there. I'm don't, away I, as well. I don't think he's catching his touch. No, that's he's the not thing. Chance. I think the ball's too far ahead of McGregor. He does nick it. Diamandi's trying to make up for his poor touch. Um, I don't know what Diamandi's arguing about. You know, it's a, it's a certain free kick, um, but it was good pressing from Celtic. You can see they're pressing high. The minute the ball goes to Barisic, Forrest is sprinting there right away, trying to put a bit of pressure on him. Um, so they've obviously worked in this and training this weekend. Callum uh, McGregor getting the old I'll referee the game from Willie Collum there. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure Celtic do particularly well out of the free kick In fact that's an understatement It goes to Liam Scales, he dallies on it Gives it to someone else who's under pressure And out for a throw in And I know you can't always do it Mark Because the referee was dealing with the situation But it's very different from that really quick free kick That we used to always see from Celtic 
Yeah, yeah, it just slowed things down there, uh, and Willie Colm had to talk to a few players. I was just watching there, yeah, James Tavenier, much better from the throw-in. Brave, nicked in, ahead of Maeda. He carries the ball, and now Rangers have got a free kick, probably about 40-odd yards f from goal centrally. Tavenier's actually looking like he's going to try and deliver this. Uh, it's a hard area to, to get right, this, because it's so central. But he's certainly telling people to make their way been a lot of free kicks given away in the opening 12 minutes, I've got to say that. But there's absolutely, he's just got to try and put a quality ball in here. Oh, I have to say, it's further than that, I would think. It's yeah. nowhere near. I think Suter at back post, is it? Or Davis? Suter? Oh, and Celtic oh. don't initially deal with it. He just kind of cannons off another green jersey and clear no, the uh, way. You know what I'm surprised though? Celtic Offside. have got enough bodies in there. Rangers have only got one. Was it Davis around the back post? I would have thought if Tavernier signalled he's going to play it there. Get a few, shooter, a few shooter. more. Uh, shooter at I have to post. say, and, and we're used to worrying about these in the other box. Has that been given for a handball against John Souter? It skiffs off Matt O'Reilly's head and cannons onto John Souter's hand yeah. from yeah. a yard away. And it's in, like we said, it's, it's in Celtic's own box. Do you need to give a free kick for that? Yeah, I, know. Just, I know. How can that be handball, Mark Wilson? Well, we all, we all know the handball stuff is. Anyway, they're a lot less yeah. controversial when they're in the defending penalty box, it has to be said. So we'll deal with that one and move on. It's not a big deal. 13 minutes gone, Celtic nil, Rangers nil. I'd be a little upset if I were Brendan Rodgers that there would be one chance uh, in the first minute of the game and no no more after well, that. Forrest mm. had one tipped over the bar, mm. didn't he, from Butland? They really I, have to <sighs> capitalise uh, Celtic and, and make Rangers' discomfort even greater. That's a good ball. That's a good ball from a Rangers point of view. Any an area that it's over the full back, it's bounced, it's allowed Silva to put a bit of pressure on and now Rangers were throwing deep into Celtic territory. They look, they look like their tactic is to go long very well, quickly. To be fair, they've been very consistent on that. Yeah. Not even just games against Celtic, that's what they do. Yeah. Um obviously they're trying to go up the park and the one of throw in there is is Matt quite a oh, well done, Baris. Borna Barisic. Yeah. He's skipped away from yeah. a couple and he's stood one up, but it does hit a Celtic head on its way through. Um, the problem, I suppose, or the difficulty with that tactic, and that's clearly the way Philippe Clement wants to play, it's a lot harder when there's no. Oh, so hold on. Oh. They're in the box here and it's flashed across goal by Silva. Goes wide, just dragged it. Good chance. Ooh, Ooh, I tell was, you what, how he's getting there sure. so easy. However, you know, it's an, the angle's always working against him, it, it, it's always wide. I think he's right to take on the shot because oh, I think there's day. enough bodies in there that it would block a cutback, but he just drags it. It's a slight opening that, you know, slight opportunity. I think he picks the wrong option, but I know it's a difficult chance. I think he should go for the near post rather than the far yeah. post. Yeah, but he has to go the outside of his foot, doesn't he? One of those. Yeah, but he's got the ability. He's a £40 million pound player. He's got the ability. James Forrest skips away from Barisic, but he's brought down illegally, according to Willie Collum. I'm trying to think of putting myself in Barisic's shoes in 15 minutes and James Forrest has run past him on the outside mm -hmm. run past him a couple of times on the inside and I'm thinking oh, well you've been you know, many a time Mark what would you do? <laughs> can you tell me surely what would I do? by the way Mark made a good point much, though. surely those ones are much harder like, if he just takes a touch inside is there what, what, what do you do? do you really need a teammate to help you? that's what I was going to say Marv made a good point with Lundstrom from with Tavernier I think Barisic is crying out for help in these games from one of his defensive midfielders to help him out. And he doesn't, he never seems to get it. I don't know if he communicates that verbally to them, but he needs it. That's working well for Rangers. They're getting up the pitch. It's just, it's like percentage football, isn't it? They go into the corner. Yeah, playing and wide diagonal balls. You know, it's, it's, it's not, all Greg Taylor can really do is head it out for a throw in. Exactly. And it gets Rangers right up the pitch, takes the pressure off their back four, and now they can play in Celtic's half. So, yeah, so far that, that tactic's working. You know what, especially when you're coming up against Maeda and Kyogo, guys that are built on pressing, you know, and you know your back four is going to be under pressure. Kick There's over nothing the wrong <laughs> kicking over yep. the head. You know, if it gets you up the pitch, what you need to do then is make better use of the throw in when you get there. And Rangers just. Go long and threw it right into Joe Hart's arms. Yeah, and I guess that level of comfort because Rangers then try and press at the other end. Carter Vickers knows he can just take a touch past Serial Dessers. There's not that same panic. A couple of reasons Carter Vickers is comfortable, Gordon, and Dessers is not. He puts himself about, but he's not like a pressing machine the way 
Celtic have at the other end. Yeah, I, I feel for Dessers because he does do a bit of work. He works hard, doesn't he? Yeah, doubt. Oh, without a shadow of doubt. But I think Celtic are very good at the back, just knocking about and beating the, the press. Matt said that if you're going to press... <sighs> Not like sure that, about that pass better. from Alistair Johnson and it gives Rangers a chance, but it's mm. a brilliant win, Greg Taylor. It's a poor touch from Lawrence, to be honest. It's a bit of a scared pass from Alistair Johnson, Mark, isn't it? Just By the way, I don't know if they had aye, much options, but you're right kind of just shifted responsibility but they found themselves in the final third yeah, yeah they have oh it's a slack pass that almost works out James Forrest was looking for uh, I think maybe O'Reilly it went to Hatati in the end and Rangers come away with it so it's it's swinging end to end and it's yeah, yeah, I give Rangers credit for the way that they've uh, approached this uh, you know not a supporter on the ground but they're 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 resolute that would annoy me Forrest gets the ball he's been in fire early on Alistair Johnson runs right into the space, space and takes his space. Stay away and let Forrest just go at Barisic. He doesn't, but he doesn't really go on the outside. I know Mark said he did, but that, well, the one he did was more at close quarters, wasn't it, in the box? Yeah, he's, but, he's not, but, you, but Forrest is good to... enough to mix his game up and say, look, see if I'm playing, I think, oh, I've got the better of him here so far. I'm testing him all the time, whether it's inside or outside. I just wonder if that's the... If that's the older version of James Forrest, you know, back in the day, we'd have gone right down the line there, but we don't see loads yeah. of it. There's been a lot of free kicks, eh? yeah, yeah. especially in the, in the middle third. That'll suit Rangers, won't it, though? Is that Stop not the point? Disrupt, course, without it. doubt, disrupt things, you know, slow things down. Everybody knows what Celtic's kind of game plan is. You know, high intensity, ball speed high, but Rangers can just... Temper it in these opening stages. Oh, that's nice from well. O'Reilly into Callum McGregor. There's a shooting chance on, but he's dragged. Mm. He had options. Dyson Maida's screaming for it. Oh, I wonder if he took the mm. wrong option. Gordon, 20 odd, 25 yards out. He's taking that on through. And Maida, look at Kyogo's run. Is that oh, no, okay, Hatati? But once once Hatati brings Tavernier, that's what I mean. Maya, Maya His is. run just opens up the space for Maeda. And there you are, Rangers praying on that second ball again, and it's not always a terrible idea, because it doesn't find Dessers, <laughs> but it does break to Sterling. It's working well. It gets him right up the pitch. Because um, I think Mark makes that point there. If you play at the back, Celtic have got the pace, the energy to go and close you down, obviously, and hit the ball off you. So they're doing the percentage football for me. Foul Hatati pulling back Lundstrom. Hugh, it's, it's two teams going about it in two very different ways. Yeah, and yeah. It's, but it's still sort of... Cancelling itself out Yeah It's a fascinating match uh, I just feel that Rangers have You know That first 20 minutes Very important They have uh, Got the well, I know, A chance there yes. Oh And Fabio Silva feels He was pulled back By Alistair Johnson In at the back post He'll See take if he's a look. not See if he's not He's got to have a look at himself He's got to score And I guarantee you so pull back? One, Well once you look at these things Slowly I think it's all. Uh, I'm not sure. Nah, he's, he's nah got, play on already. I think he's got to score for me. Is that classic Fabio Silva just sort of bothered more about what contact's going to come? Because he's he's actually get he's away from Johnson. He's Could inside he score? again. I don't. I, I'm but you does. I don't know what he's thinking. He's six yards out. He's inside Johnson. It's almost like he's waiting for contact uh, the, the, again yeah, rather yeah. than concentrating on the flight of the ball. He's done brilliant to get in front of Johnston. He's timed it great. Johnston's been caught. He's got to do better What a there. chance for Rangers though What a chance it was Great great delivery Whoever it was that put it in Didn't quite see James Forrest comes inside again Gives it to McGregor And just going to try and work it It's kind of tight As it works its way back out I think it's O'Reilly this time In that right position James Forrest into the box Here's McGregor Ooh, what Oh what a block From Davis. Ben Davis Half-hearted shouts for handball I don't think so um, and McGregor again over the bar um, this time better from Celtic but not the end product don't know if the captain's intent on trying to get the first goal but uh, he's had more attempts than anyone else Callum McGregor I think the first one he has to take it on here's this chance again Gordon what is he doing I mean Johnson has a, 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 he's got a hand on Silva's on shoulder, shoulder but it's never going to be enough that is it no no Without doubt, no looks way. Like he's closed his eyes there, and he doesn't know where the ball is. He's just got to keep. I, I sympathise with that. That's what I would do. Would you? Yeah, but, but you're not a forty exactly. million pound player, <laughs> supposedly. But I would have fancied you to knock that in. What do you mean? I'm I'm supposedly not, but right. he's supposedly. He's supposedly. Right. Just glad we cleared that. Put it, put it this way. If that's me, that's one 0 We're back at the halfway line, no doubt. Yeah. Listen, I don't. I don't doubt you. Yeah. Hundred percent. I like to back myself in big occasions. That was a bit. Was that not a bit like your goal Fought. when you were eighteen? The diving header at the back post was thirty it? yards, mate. Thirty <laughs> yards against the wind. Two yards. Uh, uh, 
Anyway, it's settled slightly. Carter Vickers is allowed a bit more time to come forward and give it to O'Reilly, who gives it to Forrest. And uh, Celtic not quite enjoying the same freedoms that they were early on and certainly nothing like some of the build-up play they had in the previous game at this stage. But I've, I've they, got, got they to say, there's the not a lot of excitement round about the box, but I'm enjoying the game. Yeah. I think it's exciting. Yeah, you feel the tension already, can't you? Oh, there's a great ball. Yeah, Maeda's knocked back across. Oh, and I don't know if Jack Butland could have come out and come and got it. But anyway, Rangers do actually clear quite well. You know, just uh, an odd one for Celtic. Not enough bodies in the box here when Maeda heads that back. Kyogo under the ball. Do you think ball? that's because O'Reilly put it in so early? so early? I didn't really expect him to put it in. I think that's when, you know, you see managers thinking you need to connect things up before you actually deliver things to O'Reilly. <laughs> just left, uh, was it right footed? Just right into the back post. Nobody's really set for it. As you would expect, Celtic, the team with more of the, the build up that's good from pass. Forrest, and he tries, it's going to be a corner. That's a better run from Alistair Johnson. In the inside of yeah. Forrest, uh, and that causes problems for the Rangers back line. Right. See when Forrest gets the ball now. For it me, is inside every for, time. Uh, right. For me, I think Lundstrom's got to come over That's what I'm saying, and so block, you, that, block that space. Yeah, He comes inside every time with it, and it's causing Without doubt, you need your problems. central midfielder in there helping you. Delivery from O'Reilly, it's a brave header away Great from header. Suter. It might just go for another corner, mm, not throw quite. Throw it. That's a good header from your centre back in the six yard line and swinging towards your goal. Managed to get height and distance on it. Of course, no Connor Goldson today. He's started 25 of the last 26 meetings between these sides. Mm. So he's, he's a fairly permanent fixture. Um, but he's not there this afternoon. His season is yeah. over, remember? And he scored two in the last time Rangers beat Celtic at Celtic Park. Yep, it remains to be seen how much we see of him in a Rangers jersey again. I know that's open to. A bit of debate, and that's good from Serial Dessers. He surely brought the foul yeah, in. Liam Scales yeah. does really well. Good striker. Is that play. his first touch? Yeah, I've, I've hardly seen uh-huh. him, but um, that's, that's good play for him. Well, that's what you're looking for. Centre forward, back in, get by your free kick, take a bit of pressure off. But the only thing you're talking about goals in there, I think that it's worked in the favour of Suter. I think he's a better player on the right hand side for Rangers. I was going to say about Dessers when you were saying about the chances it's a big afternoon with chances maybe he'll get a chance today but I always thought it was a bigger afternoon for him in getting Rangers up the pitch just like he did there and won the free kick and you know you've got other other guys that will contribute to that but if he can hold it up and give others a chance to support then he's halfway to doing his job I suppose coming out of those tight duels those scrappy situations can be key because Celtic do and it allows them to get away with Maeda down that side and as it comes in Hitati's in the box if he can just find Matt O'Reilly so much time Matt O'Reilly oh, oh. and he's pulled it wide I think he could have even taken a touch Mark yeah. Wilson oh, taking a touch and then he either had an option to shoot or slip it down the Ooh. side for Forrest either or and he's he's trying yeah. to be too precise he has got the ability come across it's always <sighs> curling away I think that's a huge chance Gordon we, yeah, get, yeah. we get hung up on shots on target and we, we talk about you know being in the box I think that's a massive chance. Uh, it is a massive chance, but what I will say about I think he's he's picked the right decision there. I had to hit that. You don't think he can touch no, that? No, no, I think he's hit it. The pace is on the ball. He's trying to guide it. He just overdoes it. But you're right, Gordon. That is a big chance for Matt O'Reilly because with his quality, you're expecting. Oh, better. it's dreadful from Dyson Maeda. Oh. I thought Celtic had a real chance there as well. He came in the pitch and won it well, but he gifts it to John Lundstrom and Serial Dessers has done brilliant. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about there. Liam Scales. And a chance for the ball to come in, and it's just going to find Joe Hart instead. Well, a couple of things there. Rangers win that ball, and I thought Lundstrom was going to play it first time through to Dessers. He just delayed. But the other the other side where O'Reilly gets that chance, how open were Rangers? The time Hatati gets the ball and actually plays it, it terribly. Oh, this is great from Liam Scales. He's driven all the way forward, but I gives it to Ben Davis. Terrible pass. I think that's what Liam Scales has been guilty of. A lot of the season Leads forward so confidently yeah, And then it's, it's the final bit It's the pass That's let him down On numerous occasions That's a much better kick From Jack Butland Greg Taylor does well initially But then kind of Sclaffs his pass up the line And then skills headers it When he could probably mm. Bring it down yeah, Celtic have. need to be careful Because Rangers Are looking for that That second ball To come back to them uh, And it has done On a couple of occasions Yep I say that uh, Clement must be happy with the way his team have approached it. They've perhaps ridden their luck a couple of times with the Matt O'Reilly chance. He really should do better, but they're very much in this game. 
Well, without doubt, they're in it. And, you know, they're going through a nice little spell just now, just keeping possession. There's nothing wrong with that. Working into the final third. Yeah, here comes Dujon Sterling, man of many positions. Mm -hmm. A reference to midweek. Did you see the, the graphic that came out on Twitter this week? No. The It was one of those... Chelsea, Corner Rangers, by the way. Chelsea, mm. FA Cup, youth, youth FA Cup winners. Where are they now? 2012. Mm. And there were some big names in it that you would recognise, like Mason Mount and so on. And up front for Chelsea was two Sean Sterling. Is that right? Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't do X. Oh, do you not? No. Oh, sorry. You don't mm. do what? X. X? You giving up your account that followed only Katie Price? No, I've never given no that else. up. She's still there. <laughs> Just don't you were talking about X's of yours. You don't do X's. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I'll goodness never for that. Give that up. Anyway, Corner Rangers. <laughs> corner Rangers, and it's an in swinging opportunity for Tavernier. Well, ben Davis is up. This is a well known weakness for Celtic. You know, the defending of set pieces, not their strongest point. Yeah, I'm not sure Joe Hart loves it either as it comes right That's in across ball. everybody in the danger area, and Liam Scales clears. That was very close. No, no takers, but can't have been far away. Well, Rangers put all the bodies in the six-yard box and Tavernier delivers right in the money. Manages to miss a lot of them. Go he, back to the, the back post area. He can't do much more with the delivery, can he? Oh, with, no, not a chance. You're just looking for that to fall to somebody at the back post. Oh, it's lovely from Keogh. Oh, take it back. It was over yeah. from Keogh. It looked lovely initially. It's a good spell from Rangers. Yeah, yeah and Lundstrom's yeah. shown good power there to get away from O'Reilly. There's a chance, chance here. We know what Lawrence is capable of outside the box, but he picks the wrong option. That man Mayeda back there covering. Um, but as I say, I think Hugh's right. Uh, the Rangers manager will be quite pleased with what he's seen just now. And here's another great op. Oh, he's given the foul. Foul on Johnson by Silva. I think that I'd like to see that again. I think the striker's just been strong. He's quite entitled to get his body across there. You yeah, we've just seen the corner again. I mean, it bounces. Four yards from goal in the six yard box. A corner. Dave, uh, yeah, Davies, oh. Davies is at the back post as well there, but uh, William Scales just in front of him. It's a great delivery. And you're just looking for that to a wee bit of luck, you know, just fall to one of your players in the in the six yard box. But Rangers had a few opportunities as well. So no yeah. way has it been one way traffic at all. And Celtic taking the opportunity from that free kick from Joe Hart just to go long. They really don't don't do it as often. Um, but they did on that occasion and it is, brings its own challenges because of course if it's up to Kyogo as an example um, it's not his strong suit you would have to say he's good with his head in the box when the opportunities arise but especially not against the two the centre halves yeah. the stature clearly plays a part in those types of passes but anyway we've reached the half hour mark it's not as frantic nowhere near as frantic as it was and that's dreadful from mm. Liam Scales he takes it out his feet and tries to find Greg Taylor instead he finds the advertising boards that's why when, when they signed these four year extension you know the, the people were you know, happy for him but he's never going to be an automatic first choice I would think because in the summertime Celtic will need to look at that area of the park and he's a good squad player but for mm. me he's not ready made first team material unless though Brendan mm. Rodgers continues to feel the way he does about him now presumably because he yeah. doesn't he doesn't show any signs of not wanting him in there Gordon well he spent a lot of money and brought in two other centre halves that obviously he's number one pick just now um, Scales has had a terrific season for Celtic you've got to say yes again the long ball from Rangers it, 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 Almost works, but then it does fall the way of Celtic. It is that percentage, like we said, you're trying to get in those areas, get control of the ball, and, and then make something happen, Mark. But when you've got two players challenging aerially, it, it, let's be honest, there is a random... Is it Mark Warburton that always used to talk about the random nature? It can drop anywhere, really. And uh, it makes it difficult to sustain anything. But here come McGregor and Taylor up the other end. These are those little pockets that Celtic are... Comfortable in Mark, isn't it? Just so comfortable in the ball when you've got Riley and Hatati and McGregor round about those areas. There's always an element of danger, and you just see Forrest here coming inside again. It's Silva this time, but Celtic being patient round about the Rangers box here. Matt Riley, we're in the box now. Oh, what oh, a, a save! Jack Butland from Kyogo was it arriving? He just took it quickly. That's kind of snapshot from Kyogo, and as we're used to with Jack Butland, it was quite central. It was, it was close to him, but he has to be there to make the save, and that's another big one. Magnificent from both parties there. I thought the good build-up from Celtic, when it comes into Kyogo, if any young kids watch it, that's the way he take it. He movement. takes it early, he just peels off, bang. But I've got to say, Butlin, 
top quality goalkeeping for me. Got to say, that's that's a magnificent save. So instinctive from Kyogo. And it's just to the left, a butt on, gets down quickly. He actually does go down. I, th- I thought it was more upright, so I have to oh, give him more Oh, down to the left, to the outside, a brilliant save. It's twice Brendan Rodgers has had his hand in the air, <laughs> celebrating a goal that wasn't a goal. Uh, he might be getting that one of those days feelings at the moment. By the way, if that ends up going in, Philip come on, oh, would be, well, he's not got here, but I was going to say, turn his hair out of Fabio mm-hmm. Silva. See, when you look at Silva, just switching off and Alistair Johnson, just walking past him, and he's the one that plays at Nick Kyogo. It's a good point because I actually had to think, like, is that Alistair Johnson on the ball there? Yeah. Why, why is that Alistair Johnson if on the ball? If you see Silva, Silva's just happy for Johnson to go. And if you're coming to Celtic Park and want a result, you need everybody pulling their weight defensively and going forward. And certainly not there from Silva. Is that the Hold on, because Rangers have got a, a, chance, a yeah. decent chance here. We know Sterling's a powerful runner, but his pass isn't great. It was just a sort of head down and hope, and it finds Carter Vickers, who fires it out for a throw. Yeah, um, certainly the, the game needs a goal, I've got to say. It's getting exciting, but it needs a goal. I still um, don't mind it, you know, I'm quite enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, so am I, but I, I like goals. <laughs> Football is all about goals for me. I don't, I don't doubt nil that. Nil-nils are no good to anybody. I'm enjoying a tactical battle. Oh, I'm enjoying that Celtic try to build Rangers going a bit more direct yeah, yeah, but yeah. still getting getting opportunities fantastic yeah it's all about goals <laughs> goals <laughs> yeah we'll pull short of fantastic I think but this is actually better build up from Rangers and then Silva's the final pass just goes through to to Joe Hart They're capable of it Mark they don't do it very often but that was quite patient stuff and a few Nice reverse passes in there. Oh, they're good players. They're, you know, they're only three points behind Celtic in the league, so they've got good, these good passages to play in them. Um, but I think, uh, come on, it'll be reasonably happy. I think I, I agree with you. Just James Forrest has all the space in the world when he comes in the pitch. Unfortunately for him, there's a trampoline in Kyogo's sock. And it's it a hard bounces, ball. Yeah, it was. It bounces through to Jack Butland. You know, if you're Celtic, uh, I, I really do think they you know, they would possibility of ruining the chance missed by O'Reilly, Kyogo very unfortunate because Butland has made a fantastic save and it's just not going in for them and you know if your if your Rangers are quite content The big chance for Rangers came the way of Silva, ends up not you know, he doesn't even really get the contact on it that he's looking for, it's a strange one, he, he gets in at the back post, he does everything right, he just, well look there's a, there's a Glasgow phrase that sums up what he did when the ball came to him yeah, are we, are we on the same wavelength? No. Never mind then. It's a, I can't repeat it. It's a scatological phrase, best left unsaid. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, Cameron Carter Vickers just got a bit of time to lift his head and bring in Kyogo, who brings in McGregor. That's not ideal if you're Rangers, but that's what Brendan Rodgers wants to happen, that sort of patient build-up at times and then go quicker when they need to. James yeah. Forrest has had so many he touches that, of the he? ball. He loves coming inside here and just playing balls. There's another oh, that's one. Nice. Great yep. run. Alistair Johnson. That's McGregor. Oh, sorry, McGregor sorry, is. yeah. And uh, Tom Lawrence has to oh. track him all the way back. Matt Plus O'Reilly, base. goal! Oh. With M&D Green Pharmacy. It's brilliant from Celtic and it is a hammer blow in that title race. Celtic won, Rangers nil. It was patient from Celtic. Then they kicked into gear. McGregor started it, he got it back, he fed it across. Matt O'Reilly has had a few sights at goal. He was not going to pass up another one. Rifles it, left-footed, into the bottom corner. Jack Butland's good, but he's not that good. And it's Celtic won, Rangers nil. And it's the ultimate test of character for Rangers now because they have everything going against them in terms terms of the 60,000 crowd and the players missing for them but they had been holding firm but on the 35th minute O'Reilly does what O'Reilly does best he's picked a beautiful shot and picked his corner and now the test of character for Rangers is Celtic have their tails and up the crowd are going off their heads can they cope what a finish what a finish. But I've got to say, Clermont will be disgusted with some of these players. I think Tom Lawrence is well off it. He's given McGregor too much space. Didn't match a run. Lundstrom's just jogging. They don't get out to O'Reilly quick enough defensively. But take nothing away from Celtic. Great play, great movement. And what a finish that is. He was pipped by Lawrence Shankland in the Player of the Year. Stakes last week, Mark Wilson, but a 15th Premiership goal of the season for Matt O'Reilly. I think he's still the top assister 
in the league as well. He has been a joy to watch this season. Oh, not, without, not for Rangers this afternoon, it has to be said. No, but no, you without take doubt. You, you take his penalty into account, Ibrox as well, a cool head. You take his 36 minutes here. He's had a free kick just by. He's had another opportunity. Rangers have had warning signs that you can't give Matt O'Reilly too many opportunities and that oh, time oh no he's just ruined it was he checking are they checking that? he's just Matt O'Reilly's just tried to spit that, and yeah. it's gone all oh. down it's all gone all down him oh. there's nothing worse Did but, take, I think they take the goal off you for that there's yeah, nothing worse they are absolutely spit. terrific from him and Daz is right though uh, Ranger, I, I mentioned it moments ago about Silva allowing runners to go off the back of him and then Lawrence drops McGregor and then Lundstrom drops O'Reilly and it's too easy for Celtic to play through and it's a terrific strike from O'Reilly and I think in the balance of play yeah I think Celtic do deserve it we're just saying Rangers have had opportunities but Celtic do deserve the lead what Rangers have to be wary of is conceding a second before half time yeah, because at, at, at that point yeah they're out of here well they didn't last time that's true that was at Ibrooks though and the yeah. crowd rocks and look I, I agree with you I was only trying to uh, mix just it up just be controversial bit. yeah but Celtic will fancy this now They'll go for a oh, jugular Oh we don't see that very oh, often Carter Vickers a 60 yard raking pass And it finds Maeda He flashes it back Oh, oh and it's oh. an own goal Goal flashes With M&D Green Pharmacy It is a disaster for John Lundstrom I don't know who else he's pointing at But it's Celtic 2 Rangers 0 And as Hugh Keevans predicted The roof has just come off Celtic Park dies in Maeda Gets kisses on the head yeah. From the Celtic fans Because they know That is the goal That might just wrap up this game And might just wrap up This Scottish Premiership title Well you spoke about the Glasgow vernacular Earlier on Here's another Glasgow phrase They deserve the jail if they don't win this match now because everything mm. that can go wrong for Rangers has gone wrong they were still trying to get over the loss of the first goal when Lundstrom has a calamitous moment and puts Celtic two in front Rangers will be praying that Dyson Maida was offside in the build up I'm not sure tight if he Gordon. was Gordon do you think it is tight? no it's tight but I think, yeah, I think he, he's onside but Take nothing away from him Oh my word It's, it's unbelievable If there are football gods John Lundstrom needs to get on his knees And hope that that is offside Because it is horrendous From the Rangers oh, the doubt, mark. I mean it's just Positionally poor though So he finds, he finds himself in that space And facing his own goal And the uncertainty is He just sticks out a foot Because he doesn't know who's coming behind him Which is nobody There's nobody behind him Dies in Maeda's book though for his celebration. He went into the crowd. As you know, yeah. we're not allowed not allowed to do that. No, Let's not have that. I've got sort to of say, fun. right, okay. But as much as Lundstrom's default, I've got to question James Tavenier. Yeah, he, yeah. Uh, do you know what? I, I didn't want him. to escape him. I cannot believe his defending there. And by the way, nobody sticks up for Tavenier more than me. Terrible defender. At what stage though? Because I thought the ball for Carter Vickers was brilliant yeah, but, and it's a great touch from Maeda. But you can't keep backing off, backing off, backing off and let him just see when the, the ball see, in when his left foot. Let the full back answer it. See when they're that quick though, Mark, and they're that close to you. What what more do you do? I know that the obvious answer oh. hold on, here's Rangers, they might try and Well there's a big chance this for Rangers at the back post What's and that? we've got to go back. Goal flashes. With M and D Green Pharmacy, we've got another goal in Dessers. Glasgow, and it's Cyril Dessers. Game on, Hugh Evans. Well, it's the old failing for Celtic. Wow. They always lose goals of this nature. That's why I, I said that the, the the back four are flaky. Uh, that is a cardinal sin to be two up, to have absolutely everything in your favour, and to concede a goal like that. Defensively, very poor and. Deserve all they get Yeah I've got to say Defensively very poor Because Alistair Johnson Gets done 2v1 here The only time in the game Barisic with a stand up Sterling with a first header And that's exactly Where you want your striker Dessers Three yards out Just to put it into the net <laughs> It's game on again What a game We've got on our hands Gordon <laughs> oh, Dale oh, You brilliant. wanted a goal About five minutes ago We've got three yeah. It's Celtic 2 Rangers 1 I said if we get anything Half as good as the last game, but it's starting to really ramp up now. Um, Dessers, we, we spoke about it. He may only get that one chance. He's brought Rangers back into the game. I've it, got to say, just before half time. Mark, that is huge oh, because we always yes. talk about the, the way these goals, and especially when you're 2 0 down, cliche and all that stuff about the next goal and how it flips things. Every time this season, 
that Celtic were in this position at Celtic Park early in the season Rangers scored and it changed everything at Ibrox the last time just after the half time break Rangers scored it can change everything it's, it is incredible the impact it can have well, look, especially at Celtic Park it goes 2-0 from that own goal from Lundstrom and the roof can cave in before half time and but, Rangers fans must have been feeling yeah. it but to get a goal within a couple of minutes it's just taking on a different form now yeah. Rangers have a corner with three minutes to go to half time and Ma put pressure on Celtic defensively Ma Ma Mark is a Johnny Hughes a defender and you're looking at Celtic there do you think Joe Hart has to come off his line a bit yeah but he never does you know he's rooted to you uh, Desher's head's at in for yeah. three four yards mm. defensively it's criminal it's never been a strong suit of his and he's a big old unit as well when you see him you, you do think I, I don't know maybe we're being harsh on this occasion it's a great ball I mm. mm, think it's going to be a goal kick to Celtic I mean, and all of a sudden how are we saying this Celtic need to try and <laughs> shut Hold up on. take, take just, this just lead into the break. just now yeah, yeah it's been a fantastic game and uh I mean, no goals up until... When was the first one? 30 odd minutes then? We've had three. 34. They must have heard me. I was crying out for... Well, that should have been a corner, no doubt about it. Um, just quite an easy decision when you look back on it. Carter Vickers heads it straight out and Celtic look a little bit yeah. wrong. Just a bit. Because Joe Hart's now fired a goal kick out of play. It, it is criminal negligence to be two up, to have the, the whole place on their heels. And Rangers not really threatening you yeah, at that point. Yeah, and uh, once again... The flaky four at the back uh, and the goalkeeper who never leaves his line and they have conspired somehow to give Rangers the ascendancy in the game when they ought to have been looking for a third goal for themselves. Credit I, to Fabio Silva, Mark, because yeah. he takes a bit of stick. He goes down the left. You kind of know he's going to chop back onto his right. That doesn't mean it's easy to stop. Um, then reverses the pass into Barisic who but does Barisic, Barisic as well does. and that's what I was going to point out for a Celtic point of view where was James Forrest yeah, in yeah. this because James is a Got hard worker it. and he's matched it all afternoon and he switched off there's nothing Alistair Johnson can do Liam Scales it's a really ambitious pass you have to say a really ambitious out for a goal kick yeah I agree with you Mark uh, I was looking and trying to look in the picture to see where Forrest was because Forrest has got to match a runner He's yeah. got to go Because he's left Johnson 2v1 But Rangers play it very well indeed Get the ball to the back post That's where they're trying to Obviously You know Oh target. but then Honestly Celtic's press Rangers just try and pass out Did they actually set traps for you yeah. there Gordon? Oh Hatati fires one I don't uh, think he needed to hit that He was no. miles out there no, but the quiet day, Hatati. The way the way Kyogo's strategically picking where he's going, and have you noticed James Forrest? Anytime Barisic gets it, it's a full sprint to him. Same with Tavernier, but Kyogo is the one that's picking either either or, and then going at pace, and that allows the midfield to pick up passes like that. The yeah. psychology of the game is incredible. You know, when Lundstrom puts the ball into his own net, you automatically assume that it's not Rangers' day, a disaster in the making. And now, all of a sudden, terrible defending has changed the whole dynamic. And here we go with more of it. Well, John Lundstrom at least showing... Oh, he's actually going to get in the book for that. Um, it's that old one marking, your day. People are applauding that. He's just trying to show a bit of intent, I think. He knows how big an error he's made. And he thunders in. Oh, uh, he, Yeah, he gets too much uh, of Alistair Johnson, I doesn't think, he? I think Hart's to blame. He, he played that <laughs> ball. Oh, what? By, that's, the way, that's that's by the that's way, red. with the excessive force and all that stuff, and we know that it's a frustration for everyone who is used to an old school look at things, but. Did they check that, God? There's a lot of force in that from John Lundstrom, and it does connect with Alistair Johnson's ankle. He's. he's I thought it was Surely the ball. Got yeah, I They've got to review that. They've got to review that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, well, I tell you that's what, I would be very surprised. <laughs> that's a red card. That's, yeah. a, that's an ankle breaker. I yeah. think, and it's the distance he's travelled, the slide. I thought he'd nipped the ball away and took Johnson, but no. when you see it back, he hasn't. That's a real bad one. Well, Hugh's right with the, the way to pass. It's poor. I left Alistair Johnson in a position. However, you cannot steam into a tackle. At that pace and miss it. Oh, Willie Collins going over to the monitor. He's John Lundstrom has, yeah, al no has already scored an own goal. He might well be about to be sent off here at Celtic Park. Alistair Johnson gets slowly up to his feet. I don't think he can get any complaint. He's off here. He's, he's, he's off. Yeah, it's a red card all day. I tell that's you the what, case, what are you, what are you doing? He's lost his discipline. But that's what, if you're going in for the tackle, you cannot miss it. If you miss it by an inch and catch Alistair Johnson high and as reckless as that 
Then Studs you've all got yourself oh. to blame. Yeah. Studs are up. And it's now, a straight car. And, and now it doesn't even really matter, but yep, here he comes. Yes. Willie Collum. He's yeah. signalling the monitor. He's calling John Lundstrom over. He's off. He's taking the yellow card back, and he is off. Rangers are down to 10 men before half time. John Lundstrom has put in an all-time low old firm performance here. He scored a dreadful own goal and he's been sent off before half-time for a tackle in an area that he had no reason to make, Mark Wilson. Well, no, he doesn't. And his manager will be furious at him. He played a part in no tracking runners at the first goal. He scores the own goal for the second goal. And he's made a reckless decision in tackle just in the cusp of half-time when his team were back in it. And he's let his teammates and manager down. It's the right decision from Willie Colm. It's a certain red card. This is a real bugbear of mine, Gordon. Because mm. And I do sympathise with players because I've never been there. But see, when people are trying to show that they're making up for something or they're, they're trying to show that they're putting themselves about and then your, your clarity of thought is to do that. I just... That, that's what separates, surely, you know, decision making so important. The manager and his teammates will be discussed it with him, Gordon. I'm sure there'll be a few strong words at half time. I'd make him get a taxi home, I wouldn't have let him back in the bus. It's not that far, though, to be fair, is it? I, I, I in think this game. it doesn't matter. It's I, not just, well. I just think that he lost composure, discipline. Look, see, when you get a tackle like that, you know. You ain't getting away with that. You're not getting away with that. He's let everybody down. Rangers will get back in the game. If they went in at half time, 2 1 down, there's still a bit of confidence there, but it's an uphill task now. I think the thing that would frustrate Mark, well, look, it would frustrate you anyway, but see when you're, and there's a yellow card for Rio Hatati, Rangers players are swarming round and trying to make the. The comparison, I don't think it's even close. No. Um, it's, it's got that scissor motion. Scissor, um, no. Yeah. But yeah, it's never going to be more than, no. than a yellow for that one. No um, Mark, when you're talking about John Lundstrom and you know, trying to put yourself about and trying to work hard, well, maybe do it on the edge of the box when Celtic are about to yeah, score. Without doubt. That's the thing. That is a pass to Alistair Johnson. He's in the right back area. There is no need. You know what? I think he's been caught up with the, the intensity uh, of those five minutes where I think you touched on it he's made the mistake but his team's back in it and there was that slight opportunity to press high but again he was he was still a couple of yards off it to get there and he's made the decision I'm with Daz I'm sure when he went to ground and you can tell when you're not getting the ball he must have known I'm running the risk here half time half time let's go to Celtic Park Marvin Bartley's with Andrew McLean Celtic 2, Rangers 1, the half-time score, a frantic game where a flurry of goals means the hosts have the lead at the break. It looked like it might be all to play for going into the second half, but a disaster for John Lundstrom means Philip Clement's side face a real, real struggle in the second half. Right at the start of the game, Celtic almost scored in the opening minute for the second Old Firm game running. Forrest got to the byline, found the ball across the face of goal. John Souter slid in, directed it goalwards, and it came off the face of Jack Butland to stop it from going in. Celtic kept on the pressure. There were some efforts from Forrest and O'Reilly. Then Rangers first opening fell to Fabio Silva in the box. It was a tight angle, but he dragged that one wide. Callum McGregor at the other end allowed space to drive towards the Rangers box. He chose to shoot, but that one also went wide then another great chance for Rangers this one a big one for Fabio Silva he got the correct side of Alistair Johnson as the ball came in from the right but he just didn't commit to the header at all and passed up a big big opportunity Matt O'Reilly's turn to go close next he had all the space in the world at the edge of the box he took the shot first time but he couldn't hit the target half an hour gone and a huge save from Jack Butland Kyogo with a first time effort Jack Butland got down low to his left to paw the ball away a big save for him but he could not do anything about Matt O'Reilly's next shot. McGregor played down the right. He turned, fed Matt O'Reilly at the edge of the box. He struck low in at the near post, and that gave Celtic the lead. Then almost instantly, it was 2-0. Dyson Maeda down the left. He cut it back into the box, and then John Lundstrom, all he could do, he opened up his body and somehow managed to put the ball into his own net, into the bottom corner. The title party had well and truly started here inside Celtic Park, but... There was a quick response from Rangers across from Borna Barisic from the left was headed back across goal by Dujon. Dujon Sterling, sorry, and there was Cyril Dessers to flick the ball in with his head for 2-1. They looked back into it, but then a nightmare for John Lundstrom steaming into a challenge on Alistair Johnson. It was completely unnecessary, no danger whatsoever. He caught him high. It was initially given as a yellow card, but... Willie Collum was sent to the screen by VAR Stephen McLean and sent him off 
on review. The half-time score is Celtic 2, Rangers 1. Marvin Bartley it has been an action-packed first half. It really has. Listen, we've been treated to three goals, but even up to that point, you know, the football being played was fantastic, especially by Celtic. Rangers, they were really struggling to press Celtic. You know, from back to front, they were far too far apart. It was far too easy for Celtic to play balls into that midfield three, and then all of a sudden they were turning and running at the Rangers' defence. As you said there, you know, it's been action-packed. John Lundstrom getting sent off at the end. I think that comes from Silver, though. You know, I've been watching him an awful lot in this half. And if I was a Rangers player, Rangers management team, he'd have been getting both barrels because, for me, he's not working nearly hard enough. The only time he's impacted this game is the reverse to Barisic, which sets up the goal. But in terms of tracking back, in terms of following Johnson, he's not done enough. And that's why Lundstrom, at the end, he's actually telling Silver to back off into that left-hand side, to let the first pass be played and let him press from there. And then Lundstrom ends up steaming in. He's been frustrated. He's been a massive player for Rangers. Something that people might not see at home is that he's orchestrating absolutely everything with the press. He's going to be a massive miss from the second half. When you look at the, the way the game was set when Rangers got that goal back, there may well have been a nervy atmosphere in here at half time. Just could it have been a momentum swing for Rangers after going two goals down? But the atmosphere, the dynamic completely changing going into the second half because of that John Lundstrom challenge. Yeah, exactly that. Listen, the Celtic supporters celebrated that Lundstrom red card as if it was a goal. Um, and that's because they knew Rangers were coming back into this game. They knew that they were getting further up the pitch. You know, they're getting a few more balls into Dessers. They were getting, you know, balls into wide areas, especially with Sterling on the other side. And they were beginning to take some more control in this game. But for me, it's going to be a massive ask in the second half. And as I've said there, I'll be su- extremely surprised if Silva comes out in the second half because down to 10 men now, for me, doesn't do nearly enough off the ball. Well, it's been absolutely breathless so far here at Celtic Park. Celtic not only have the advantage in the scoreline, but... They've got a man more than Rangers who have had John Lundstrom sent off. The halftime score here at Celtic Park is Celtic 2, Rangers 1. Well, it's all in Celtic's favour now. And it would be a monumental mistake if they did not capitalise on the fact that they are 2-1 up. They are 11 playing 10 and they have the 60,000 Celtic supporters behind them. They must capitalise on all of that or... In terms of the championship, if they let Rangers back in for a draw or worse, then it goes down as a horrendous day for Brendan Rodgers and his players. It's in Celtic's hands. It's been a brilliant first half. We've just witnessed there. Uh, we're chatting about tactically, two sides going about it in different ways, but still creating chances at either end. And it's funny, when you get players at this level, you think people won't switch off. And... All three goals, people have switched off or it's been a mistake. Um, But, you know, you've got to say, action-packed, like we all hope for, finishing off with a red card. And Philippe, come on in there, will be distraught that John Lundstrom's been red carded just when they were getting back in the game. Distraught's one word for it, Gordon. Mm, I (laughs) I think you'll be having a few strong words with him. I certainly would be, Gordon. But interesting to see what he does second half. I've been looking at Rangers in the middle of the park where it was so important... I'm looking at guys like Tom Lawrence. I think he's well off the pace this afternoon. I wouldn't be surprised if he changed him. What a breathless first half. It burst into life. We didn't have loads of action in the opening stages. Celtic scored two. We thought they would cruise to victory. Rangers pulled one back. And then John Lundstrom got sent off. Catch your breath. We'll be back next. Clyde One Super Scoreboard with Call Robert Accident Repair. Accident not your fault. You'll be back on the road within 24 hours. The fastest goals, the experts' opinions. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Now you've caught your breath on that first half, let's reflect a bit more before the second 45 begins. If you're just joining us, I've got no idea where you've been, but it better be a good excuse. Celtic are 2-1 up at the break, they were 2-0 up in cruising, Uh, then Rangers got one back just before the interval, and you thought maybe... Have a real game on our hands And then John Lundstrom gets a straight red card And the advantage definitely lies with Celtic Now Marvin Bartley It's been quite something But it's definitely advantage Celtic Um, You know I think in the second half Rangers are going to have to sit off the ball And they're going to try and hit them on a counter attack Or even from a set play Uh, You know the guys in the studio have mentioned it on numerous occasions How flaky Celtic do look when those balls are coming into their box what they can't afford to do, especially you know, with Silver and Dessers kind of initiating the press, is try and go and press high. Because at times it, you know, it's far too easy for Celtic to play the ball down their right-hand side, come back out, 
and Destin's positioning standing on part of Vickers. The ball's in straight into scales and all of a sudden they're breaking on line with the next pass. So I think they're going to have to sit off the ball, they're going to have to be disciplined and then go from there. Yeah, I mean, is it up until that point, it's hard to look past the main talking points, Marvin, but tell us what it's like in the stadium. It, it sort of feels like it's two completely different teams who go about their... their, their go about things in completely different way and it's not right and wrong Rangers get themselves back into it and it's it's close for a minute or two and the sending off might change things but it's two very contrasting styles isn't it yeah 100% Gordon um, you know Celtic as I said they're trying to play from the back and as I said with the press being the way it is with Destas and Kyogre there's a massive massive difference so it's a lot easier right. for Celtic to get it from one side to another and then play through the lines in terms of Rangers they're trying to get it into their full backs early and then they're flipping the ball forward you know for Destas to go and compete for the first ball when it drops into that midfield area they're hoping that Lawrence or Sterling can pick up the next one um, but at times you need to you know you need to mix it up because I think at times Barisic has had the ball and Silva's ran trying to run in behind when there's been no space to do so so he needs to come and get the ball to feed you know to allow them to build through the lines again but as you said there's no right or wrong the only problem that Rangers do have massively now is that they're down to 10 men so they're going to need a massive massive effort from every single player out there there are obvious similarities before I try and make the comparison but you know Rangers did go down to 10 men in this fixture earlier in the season it was then their best spell and they, they sort of rocked Celtic a bit it, it, has this come too early in the match for that to be a factor Marvin or can they do it again Listen, they have to believe that they can do it again. But if you're asking me which change room would I rather be in, it would 100% be the Celtic one. Because, you know, I think Celtic will then go up a gear now. Gordon, I think Rangers will find it very, very difficult to live with them. As I said, if I'm in the, in the Celtic dressing room, I'm saying down Rangers' left-hand side is where we have to attack. Because Johnson running forward, O'Reilly at times has found himself out in this wide area. Because they're getting 2v1s with Barisic all day long because, as I said, Silva is switching off. But Rangers, on the flip side of that, have to believe they can do it. But they have to go from a strong base. They can't afford to you know, go and, as I said, press high and then get picked off with only 10 men. They're going to have to be comfortable without the ball and set traps and then try and build from there. Uh, and as for Celtic then, Marvin, I take it uh, <laughs> Brendan Rodgers will be looking for foot to the floor to try and kill this off early and, and get that crowd up. Can, can, or can they afford to be a bit more patient? No, no, no. You know, as you said there, you know, it's foot to the floor. It's take it up... the two more gears that they have got and if you know you tire at 60 minutes then we'll freshen it up with substitutes but yeah you know Brendan will leave them in no uncertain terms when they come out of that dressing room it's time to go as if you're playing against 11 men because if you let Rangers build in terms of confidence and the longer the game goes on they believe they can nick something Celtic have to go hard straight away as if they are the team that are losing it rather than winning uh, I assume that's Rangers back out because of the booze um, what, 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 are Rangers going to retweak anything by the way I hadn't really considered that in terms yeah, there of will be one change for Rangers we did think it might happen because the only player that went out and warmed up for Rangers was Ross McCausland so he is going to make way uh, or sorry he's going to come on of course uh, we've seen so far in this game that John Lundstrom has been sent off so there is a rejig in there at the moment just trying to work out exactly who it is that's going it, it looks like Suit is coming off and it looks like Stern is going to send a half yeah, so it's going to be John Suter. Actually, that is a big, big surprise. John Suter is the player that's going to make way for Ross McCausland. So it's going to be a change for Rangers in that sense. Dujon Sterling looks as if he's going to slot into that right centre-back role alongside Ben Davies. I just wonder from the positioning of James Tavernier at the moment, are Rangers potentially going to go to a back three? Or is it likely that... Uh, James Tavernier will push a bit further forward and it, and it will continue to be a back four Marvin No I did look at his, his standing position there but I think he's just talking to Stern I think if you're going to a three you leave Suter on the pitch I think if you put Tavernier into a back three you know you really are taking away one of your main attacking threats I think they'll stay as a four for now You must wonder whether that is some sort of injury potentially to, to John Suter you wouldn't think that the natural move for Philip Clement would be to shift to John Sterling to right centre back would it? No no I, I think it has to be an injury there I think Suter's done well in this game um, so yeah I couldn't see him coming off and Sterling going there unless he's an injury yes the only change from Rangers and it is Dujon Sterling moving to centre back and Ross McCausland is on for John Suter and we're back underway Clyde One Super Scoreboard Goal Flashes with M&D Green Pharmacy speak with a pharmacist about their private health and prescription service for men Hugh Keevans, you know what I scoff at when I see English football fans on social media saying, oh, these two play all the time. How can this still be a big deal? Yeah. Everyone's a big deal. <laughs> Everyone's different. Yeah. You, just, you know, the last time we spoke about seeing the the goal after 21 seconds, this time, you know, they just produce so many big moments. 
I never get tired of using the phrase It is the fixture that is a separate life form So we'll call the first 45 minutes An emotional roller coaster And there will be no dispute over that Now it's all about The next goal If Celtic get it and it goes 3-1 Celtic Then you have to assume That even in this separate life form Rangers are out of it uh, however, if Rangers, 10-man Rangers, were to get it uh, from that vulnerable Celtic defence, then we would have mayhem on our hands. So, 45 minutes that we will remember for a long time. It is quite the change for Rangers, mm. Gordon. We joke about Dujon Sterling. Oh, he can play anywhere. What's next? Well, I'll tell you what is next. Centre-half at Celtic Park in an old firm game. 2-1 down. And down to 10 men I agree with Marvin At Celtic Park I think it's an injury He wouldn't take Souter off Absolutely no chance He would have tweaked that um, That's another body blow Because Souter's a big player Especially at the centre Of that defence That is going to be tested In the second half Because Celtic obviously With that one man advantage So it's an uphill task And I know it's not on anyone's mind Really right now But I wonder if it's a serious injury Euros round the corner All yeah, that sort of stuff yeah. But that can wait for Another day It's l lots of Celtic possession At the start of this half It's very patient oh, Here's Matt O'Reilly And he oh. drags it he's, he's dragged three wide Of the right hand post He stuck another one In the bottom corner by the way Which is a Telling contribution But he, he nutmegs Diomande And I think the shot Nutmegs Ben Davies as well But dragged wide That's too easy for me That mm -hmm. is far too easy If you're a Rangers manager I think he's already He's talking to his bench here We see him on the camera I think he's already Looking to think You know Maybe a, a couple of more substitution. That's too easy. You can't do that against a top top team with top quality players, and they get away with one there because O'Reilly could have easily put that in the back of it. We've not known him that long, Hugh. He doesn't strike you as the type to suffer fools. Philippe, no, come on. No. I wonder. I wonder how exactly he dealt with. Hold on, Rio Hatati so outside space. the box corner. I wonder how he dealt with John Lundstrom at half time. It might not be style. It might be that you leave it for another time or whatever. But well, I, th I think the temper there. Uh, I, I don't think that uh, he would have taken it lightly uh, But now his focus has to be on where they go from here The TV coverage claiming, and they can kind of find these things out That is a tactical change from Philippe Clement Well, it's either a tactical masterstroke Or it's a tactical boob uh, But only Celtic can determine which is which So, as I say, the next goal is the vital one If Celtic get to 3-1 and that they're playing 10 men, then, you know, they, yeah. they, they couldn't come off that park not having won the game. The, the, the fans would go ballistic. Uh, so it's all Celtic at the moment, and they really have to capitalise on what's going for them. If that's I, a tactical change, then he's obviously... I have no idea what he's I'd thinking. I'd be interested to find out after the game what he was thinking there. Um, because I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, well, what, what are you really changing there? You know, you're taking your... Your right winger and putting him to centre back, and then you're bringing on. I mean, he's not your right winger though. I suppose is he? Is that uh, on the day your yeah, right yeah. winger? So you're changing that. And by the way, you've got some joy from that right winger mm. who heads the ball back from the goal, who who gave Greg Taylor a bit of difficulty. So you're changing that for a centre back yeah. that. I don't know if he'd done much wrong. It's a good point because I was going to say, oh, maybe Sterling carries the ball out, but John Souter carries the ball out. Of course. Just and and, and listen, when better. you're down to 10 men and you get. Minimal opportunities You want to keep your threats on In the opposition box as well It is constant Celtic possession here Callum McGregor outside the box Blocked again um, and I'm, Sylvan I'm surprised Silva do stayed on the pitch well, He's done well though Yeah I had I, a hand in the goal And here he comes But oh, See if you, see if you play against guys in Maeda You would the, just the, go away Wouldn't the, you Yeah The <laughs> Duracell <laughs> Constantly there The Duracell battery caught him um, So all Celtic Bessel's beginning to look A more and more isolated figure Up front But Celtic have to Formalise their superiority In the shape of a third goal I just, think it's just patience Hugh yeah, they, they, I don't they know think they're 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 go uh, Yeah they're going to dominate In the box again Oh That's penalty Willie yeah. really Collin points to the spot No complaints I don't think Matt Well there are some now But Diomandi holds his hands up Matt O'Reilly just got the ball Let it run across him And it did look like his heels were clipped we're going to see it again He looks over his shoulder O'Reilly takes yes. the touch And the, Yeah Just into the back of O'Reilly's calf Yeah And by the way I think Diamandi's been all over the place today yeah, as well I think yeah. he's had a shocker You know It looks a yard short So, so many fouls 
I think Rangers midfield have looked and, terrible. Hugh, you were saying they had to get a third goal. Celtic just needed to be patient. You saw the spaces round about the Rangers penalty area. If you give Hitati or Riley and McGregor that space, they will pick a pass. And they did that that time. It's one of those. You've, you've seen them a million times. It's ve- it's totally accidental from yeah. Diamandi. But uh, any complaints from you? <sighs> it doesn't need the accident's not an, it's not an issue. It's not a. And, and when I when I seen it first Gordon right away, I went penalty kick. Um, what do you think now? You've seen it back. <sighs> uh, I think Diamandi's a bit unfortunate, a bit unlucky. For and me. It's not yet a penalty. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well. I, I, is it going to be a clear and obvious error? Well, that would be a, mm. that would be a big surprise, would it not? Yeah. So the argument would be, and, and people will make the argument, yeah, a, a, Riley, a Riley kicks Diamandi. It's a penalty kick for me. I think Diamandi's wrong side, he plants his foot. It's, it's a penalty. Mel, they're taking their time, they're having a look at it. Willie Collum's getting some instruction. It's Stephen McLean, isn't it, on yeah. VAR at Clydesdale House. So the nervous wait continues. Matt Riley looks Do you think up he'll the, dink it? the scoreboard. I would, I would think not. Same one as, as maybe Hearts. Well, yeah. McCollum's getting some info in here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's concentrated. I, I'm looking at this again. I'm I'm not too sure, boys. I think O'Reilly kicks into Diamandi. I'm not too sure but, about that. But when O'Reilly, oh, he's got over to the monitor. I'm not wow. too sure about that, boys. But O'Reilly doesn't even know Diamandi's I know. there. So he's going to he's, 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 he's going to shoot, just, and Diamandi's yeah. impeded his shot. Do you think that O'Reilly went down? Theatrically? I, think, I think he does right. go down theatrically. So that's not the best <sighs> angle. Matt really doesn't even know Diamandi's there. Right, I'm going to say, I think this will be overturned. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it now that Willie Collins has gone yeah. to the monitor, you have to say. Well, so yet another drama. I, think, to I, I don't think filled. Diamandi can do anything there, guys. Other, well, okay, I think take, he can, but I think point. O'Reilly doesn't help himself with the way he goes down after it. I think Hold on. when O'Reilly throws himself, I still think that's a penalty kick for me. Well, well, well. Well, are you now coming back round to it, are you? No, I don't know. I've just got to sit in the fence and oh, really, the best. Again, anywhere else in the pitch, that's a free kick. It's a free kick. Because does Diamandi put his standing foot where O'Reilly's trying to run? Yeah. Uh, do you know, the, the, the strange thing is, though, from behind, it does look like O'Reilly throws his foot out the way, but I, it's hard to imagine why he would, because he doesn't really know where Diamandi is. I think he's got to shoot, it's obviously, just, and he catches, yeah. Wait, I, I, Willie Collum yeah, yeah, I think he's penalty. stuck by his original decision <laughs> Hold on This I guy's flip-flopped Hold on <laughs> let's, let's, not, let's, let's, just be, let's just be doubly sure Because sometimes Three We've kick. seen this in the cup final No, he stood by his decision Yeah, Willie Collum And Hugh We can't be hypocrites about this We say we like it when they do that Yeah In terms of Not that it's the right or wrong decision But strong refereeing That's really strong Yeah You've got one of your colleagues saying We think you've made an error here in a really high profile game Come and have a look Willie Collum's gone Took his time and said Disagree with that Willie Collum has got all the big calls correct And has refereed the game very well No man in his position stands a chance In a Celtic Rangers game But the man with the weight of the world on his shoulders now Is Matt O'Reilly Because he has to score If he scores It's a, an early finish for Rangers If he doesn't Then the melting pot is back open. Here he comes, Matt O'Reilly. It's saved oh, by Jack yeah. Butland. It's a weak too penalty. Casual, too casual. Very casual. Um, which it has worked for him before, but it's very casual to Jack Butland's left, and the Rangers keeper keeps them in it. It's a good thing as well. Oh, it's a terrible yeah. penalty. You could almost see where he was putting that. No pace. Oh, it's, awful. it's not even in the corner. Oh, it's awful, isn't it? Butland because, guesses the right way. Because mm. I've seen, Gordon, you can be casual and then roll it into a corner. But it's casual and he tamely. Puts it in, in the middle or sort of between Jack Butland and the corner, if you like, at a perfect height. That's, that's yeah. a really good penalty. Do you know what I'm penalty. surprised at, Gordon? Every time O'Reilly's had a shot, he's went for that corner, <laughs> right? Nice and he's dragged it. I thought he was just going to give Butland eyes and put it in the other corner and roll it in there. But you're right, he was too, too casual. You know, too it's a frustrating thing for the Celtic fans. They watched him last week. Against yeah. Hearts, Put it high in the yeah. top pace. corner with power, pace, and that's as slack as you'll get. So Rangers off the hook for now. Is this is this a dafty? Is this one of those mad old firm days? Because Celtic haven't taken advantage of everything that's gone their way. Yeah, well, we do say that big moments can change things and a missed penalty goes down as one of those so the next period in the game will be Rangers need to get crucial. the ball I mean, yeah, it's resumed to just Celtic constantly yeah. 
uh, with possession about 20 yards from goal um, and uh, on that occasion Rangers have to sweep it away I think it'll just be a matter of time I think Celtic are just keeping the ball keeping possession of it moving Rangers players about Rangers you, can't go the pitch you need an outlet and I know they've brought on McCausland but I would have looked at right that's why I thought Silva was lucky to stay on I thought right maybe carry the ball better for you They've got I don't no think Silva's done a l- you know, I, I'm not a great fan, but I don't think he's done anything. Well, hold on. He had an involvement in playing Barisic for the goal. He's missed a sitter from three yards. He's been switched off for the Celtic goals. And but what else has he done? He's had a good game, <laughs> Matt. That's why I'm surprised he's still on. I mean, I don't think you can survive by just taking the ball in and playing Barisic down the line, and that's a good 45 minutes. I really don't. Yeah, they always just double check or show you prove later that Jack Butland was on his line which he definitely was he had all the time in the world he didn't need to he didn't need to commit too early to that one it was Such a very a weak penalty yeah. for Rangers Jack I'm Butland. a bit disappointed he just didn't catch it that was yeah. a poor, I know poor he could have by the way it was a poor poor penalty kick I think Rangers look a bit leggy I know they're down to 10 men but it's only well, they have all day really haven't they yeah I think the middle of part's been disappointing for Rangers Diamandi's been off it uh, I think Tom Lawrence is well off the pace. Lundstrom's had an absolute nightmare of a uh, first half. Here's Maeda against Tavernier for the umpteenth time in this fixture. But the Japanese winger just comes back in and finds McGregor. Because Celtic can do that now. There are those spaces. Oh, Celtic are in the box. Tell squared you across. It's bouncing everywhere. And Rangers hack it clear. You always have to, as Hugh Keevens points out, accept that mad things can happen. But... As you would expect, home advantage, numerical advantage. This is this is all Celtic. I think it's just a matter of time. They're making good runs. That's a great opportunity there. Silva good again. To, yeah. That's what I was going to say, Mark. Look, down to ten men makes it tough. But if you're Silva, do you just have to dig deeper there and at least yeah. try and follow Alistair Johnson? See, when you're down to ten men, your midfield's so important for you. Your midfield has to be narrow. They have to track runners. They have to really dig in. Just and, call him checking here. Honestly. And they've got a guy in the midfield who, I don't know if that's his game. I don't know if he fancies tracking runners into the box and we see Alistair Johnson just jog into the box. It was a good opening again from Celtic. And again, they need to be patient. They need to try and work Rangers side to side and then, you know, they've got the players in the middle of the pitch that can penetrate with McGregor on the ball now. Um, I mean, Marvin, who's at the game and watching the eyewitness, he's been in touch. He is not having Fabio Silva's effort levels here <laughs> whatsoever. Well, that's why I was surprised, Gordon, that he appeared for the, the second half. I thought you need more. And you need Callum to be McGregor more from outside the box, oh. eventually held by Butland. Well, it's one way, one way street. Um, and Gordon is convinced that, that patience is the virtue that you require. Uh, I haven't ruled out the possibility of a dafty. Mm, I, can't, I, I know what you're saying to you, that can happen, but. I think Celtic are just too much I mean, in control they might, of this but game. They need to get the ball, ball first, which yeah. is quite quite an important factor. But it is possible. Yeah, I'd be I'd be looking at my bench. I know that you're asking Raskin and Yilmaz are coming. I'm on. not surprised. I'm not surprised at that. Diamande or um, as I say, I don't think Lawrence has been at it. Diamande's been off. Oh, oh, oh it's a bad fortune. Goal, but the flag Offside. might go up. But it certainly looked at. It was dies in Maeda. We'll, we'll keep a, a, a little eye. There's no real protests. I think most no. people felt it was, but of course we'll get that second look. Celtic have shot from outside the box so many times. Yeah, he's a good bit off. Mm. That won't stand. Yeah, that, I wondered about that one there. Was that James Forrest? That, that, 25 yards out, you know. Yeah. So is it Barisic is obviously going to come off straight swap? Yeah, you would have thought so. And Raskin in for... Any midfielder, really. Yeah, yeah. T- take them all. <laughs> if Silver survives, again... He will. He it's Tom Lawrence. Yeah. He doesn't take Silva off for either of his Is it Tom Lawrence? Tom, Tom Lawrence has been. He, yeah. I like Tom Lawrence, but he's been off mm. it all day. Yeah, uh, Barisic. I see the Rangers manager just saying to him, You get your tracksuit on and got the London Roadway, Lindstrom. <laughs> he's got a 10 minute start on you. <laughs> well, Yilmaz, I, I was surprised at that before the game. That Barisic, I know Yilmaz hasn't played a lot of football recently. But just in a game of such importance and you're on the bench and he's been brought on in 60 minutes, I would always tend to start with my strongest. And Neil Mars certainly the strongest left back at Rangers at this minute. Um, so it was, it was a surprising one from Clement. 
as was his substitution in the second half. And if it does pan out here, you're right, if Rangers manage to grab something, then he is a tactical genius. Yeah. I just can't understand why. It's a, I, I, I think some of these decisions, if it's tactical, are, are baffling. I've got to say, baffling. Good play. Yeah, Celtic in the box again. Oh, it's great work from great, Silva. Yeah, Silva, great great team work from Silva, by the way. Silva. I sometimes think that he, did, he did brilliant defending there. I see when you get a player like Alistair Johnson, Mark, who relishes the physical contact. Do they sometimes prioritise it? I don't know if is there any. Can he not just get on that without trying to lean in to Silva as much as he does? I think he thinks he's maybe offside, so he slows yeah. down a wee bit, and he should have just kept going, and he would have been in. It was a good run, well picked out by Celtic. Rangers could do a wee period, couldn't they? Just two, three, three or four ball, passes. Yeah, yeah. yeah keep the ball. Yeah, because Celtic would undeniably have hoped to have added to their advantage and they had that golden opportunity from the penalty spot which Matarelli passed up. But there is nothing to suggest Ranger can score yet, but you never know. That's all you can really cling on to if you're Philippe Clement. Well, you, won't exactly. be, you won't be encouraged in any way by the first 15 minutes of the second half. But how encouraged are the Celtic supporters after the first 15 minutes of the well, second half? Th- th- absolutely everything of the ball, Hugh. You, can, you can't always click your fingers and score. I know that is a concept lost on you at times. Yeah, you don't like to hang around. He's got no time for no, hanging around, have you, no. Hugh? I, I, I think they'll be anxious. Uh, uh, the, the Matt O'Reilly penalty deflates people I'd agree if Rangers show signs of making them anxious they will but yeah. I just don't think we're there yet it could, it can happen 100% I think Rangers are just going to try and dig in keep ourselves in the game last 10 minutes on you go Geronimo everybody up uh, Geronimo <laughs> on you go boom attack all out attack I would have loved to have seen you say that on the touchline Get on him all. Everybody yeah, up. Forget that goal. Six one Rangers at Hamden. Everybody up. Uh, we'll go back into hold this. Hold on a minute. I was six nil. Six nil. Sorry. Yeah. I'll give yeah, you too I much credit. I don't know if you've ever managed a team in cup finals or semis, but big decisions have got to be made. Fell short but Oh long. it's oh, nice From really. Kyogo oh, He just over does it this. He stepped over it Let it run through his legs He had Ben Davies In a spin But then he couldn't quite Get the better of New centre back Dijon Sterling Yeah I think he just Actually tries to nutmeg him There again Rather than You know Being a bit more assured on it He tried something That wasn't on and Liam Scales Takes it a wonder Amount of touches Liam Scales has had on the ball this afternoon is Ooh. double what everybody else has had, I think. Celtic nearly get themselves in a bit of bother. It was just unnecessary at the back, but or down the down the left hand side, I should say, it came back the way, but Carter Vickers he's allowed to carry it all the way into the Rangers half because there is that man advantage. But they were able to sort of do that anyway in the first half, Gordon. That's the thing. If you are well, there's a balance. Look, Rangers got themselves back in it. Mm. So I'm not saying this. Of course, the red card's been costly. But even right from the start, Rangers never got this stuff right. No, Celtic have, uh, throughout the game, Celtic have been the better football side. There's no doubt. Rangers had that tactic of getting it long and trying to pick up second balls, throw ins, get their cell up the pitch. Celtic more try to play through the middle, through the zones. Um, they're just, um, they're obviously dominating the game just now, but. As long as Rangers can try and keep in it. What nice problem. from Matt O'Reilly. Oh, it's lovely from Matt O'Reilly. Celtic in the box, oh. but the cross. And there's a claim for a handball here from Alistair Johnson. But I don't know if I, anyone else is on the same wavelength. Handball. Uh, uh, claiming I, for who it? is he claiming for here? I think it's when the cross first comes in. So you'll see, yeah. I think it's... No, I don't think that hits Ben Davies, does Sterling. it? Oh, I Sterling. Think it's Sterling. Oh, Sterling. Sterling one in the middle. Sterling puts his cell towards it. He's running a risk there, Sterling. Uh, is well interested in this no, 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 no. Like play it. on play on thought it was a poor cross by the way from Alistair Johnson they worked it well great little reverse pass into him he's got to flash it across the face and he plays it behind everybody off the ground as well so even if it was perfect it was going to be difficult for whoever was coming in I thought there might be a push in the back yeah. of Hatati but ref says no and the Rangers try and spring forward it's just oh, I was going to say a bit over hit it's majorly over hit and goes through to Joe Hart. Can I be Celtic easy. will need to be wary though if that pass was better. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I'm just going to say it can't be an easy task for Dessers up there yeah, now. No. I mean, he's just he's just running between centre half and centre half. I'd be looking at the bench hoping to get subbed. <laughs> <laughs> I've done my bit. I've scored. scored. <laughs> 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 so so much space again, Greg Taylor. He doesn't shoot. 
and then it's a scooped pass into O'Reilly. Oh, you can't let that bounce in the box if your Rangers is <laughs> yeah. crowded out. You may howl me down, but they're not mm. doing enough Celtic to, to get that third goal. Oh, no. I'm not going to howl you down, but we just we can't keep saying it every five minutes. It's just constant domination from Celtic, and obviously they've not scored. We all we all know that, but nothing's really changing in the game. So. Mm. What do you mean? I, mm, what's changing uh, in this game? I, it's been the exact same since the start yeah, of the first. I, I was going to say, sometimes when it goes to 10 men, you say, this looks hard to play against and they're making it tough. I don't think Rangers are making this tough. Even though Celtic haven't added to it, Hugh, I don't think Rangers are making this tough for Celtic to to when, break through them. When and Rangers equalise, all three of you can go and get me a but, coffee. But that's the point, yeah. Hugh. Arguments can't be based on... Oh, lightning might strike You know All we're doing at the moment Is trying to see What's happening in front of us Do you want us to admit That Rangers could score Fine Of course they could But all we're doing is As the game goes on Talking about what's happening In front of us We've seen no sign of it So I, it might happen But I think everybody knows that I just think given Here's the, James Forrest Coming oh, into the box He no, just dallied really too long Well done Silva By the way up, by was, so He's been MOM Ever since I, <laughs> <laughs> Since I've gave him that <laughs> By the way I did think he allowed James Forrest in He's left here I think Forrest has got to shoot on his left. I think he's good enough in his yeah, left. Yeah, he's, he's he put the opening there for his cell. Um, I'm agreeing with you, Mark. I think you've got to pull the trigger. It right, does well to get back, Silva. wonder if he's just had too many shots. He's all... He's shot it out. Shot out. His left foot. Um, and that is it, I suppose, when we said it earlier, if James Forrest's off the right and he's coming in in the last few weeks, he's been coming in onto his stronger foot, Gordon. Yeah, yeah, uh, Forrest is obviously Here better off the left. Here we are, what, Hugh? <laughs> Rangers, <laughs> Rangers get the ball in Celtic's half. Yes, here we are. You know they didn't even get it, they just nearly uh, did. You yeah. know what? I've got a question there, Hugh, and this is serious. When Rangers get a bit of respite, Butland's got the ball in his hands. Correct. It goes long so quick that the Rangers midfield are about 30 yards away from Desser. So, what's the best that can happen? Desser's chests it and he's got no support anyway, but it goes through it. So you'd think they'd be as well gathering their thoughts a bit, getting everybody up the pitch, and then maybe going a bit direct, but so disjointed from Rangers at the minute that think, you'd find it hard for them to get a chance. I, I actually go, I'm going the opposite, Mark. I think Rangers have got to try and be brave and play through the back and try and play through it. Because if you've got 11 v 10, OK, you'll have Dessers up, you'll have two men marking Dessers. So it gives you the even in your own half to go and try and play through them. Yeah, it's well defended by Ross McCausland Came in on the blind side of Here Greg Taylor And this could be at least an attack from Rangers We've not really seen one And he does well, he's got McCausland with him Yeah, he's found a bit of... Sp oh, he just... Oh, he's yeah, out of fall to Ross McCausland But his touch is heavy And Celtic boot it away Would you have hit that there? Oh, if all, you were Ross do you know McCausland? something? All day long I would have hit that I'm wondering I a would more have put my foot right through that Dropping over his shoulder uh, Just take it on Mark I think that was Just sitting lovely When that was coming down I would have Certainly taken that on Adam Ida Is going to come on For Celtic Kyogo is um, it? Would they take Kyogo off? It's, it's funny Because it's usually The change that if Celtic Are under a bit of pressure It gets you up the pitch But I mean this is It could not be Further from that to be well fair, now, Silva yeah, does come Silva. to the box And he's <laughs> over But I mean in the balance of play Celtic are never going to be under Sustained pressure here Because of the numbers So It's an interesting one Yeah I wonder Still the, uh, Since uh, He had the cutback Does Sterling just do enough To pull his arm I Out think, the way I think it does flick off his does arm Does it flick off his um, arm Does it But I think as you say he's, it is, it, By the time it hits him It's quite close to his side Johnson's he's struggling a trouble Yeah he's here. Signaling to the bench you yeah, didn't see anything Doing there on Alistair Johnson But he is struggling uh, Nicholas Kuhn is Kuhn also Going to come well. on for Celtic Adam Ida and I think Brendan Rodgers is waving triple substitution presumably a replacement for Alistair Johnson back who's on there Ralston is it just a straight swap well you wonder if he, if he just sticks with us four at the back you know under no pressure or does he go for something more adventurous it'd be uh, a big risk wouldn't it yeah well they're comfortable Mark they're one in two one They've got the game and they're, they're mercy just now. So, <laughs> oh, oh, and it might be that'll be a booking for Callum McGregor. It's got to be. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. pulled Nicholas Raskin's jersey. It wasn't the worst decision after he, he made a pig's ear of it. So it wasn't the worst decision to just you know pull him back. I, I wouldn't be having a go at the Rangers player or Willie Colm. I'd be having a go at William Scales for passing the ball the way he did 
he wasn't even set Callum McGregor and it's been passed into him and he's off balance so he has to then recover the situation Liam Scales has been slack in possession too many touches too indecisive this afternoon and that's me a Liam Scales fan as well <laughs> I quite like him jeez I, I wonder um, how his detractors speak yeah, about him then mm. coming off here yeah Celtic shuffling the pack now as well not being his, uh, his sparkling best but he does his shift for the team um and obviously Kuhn coming on for Forrest as well Gives him a James little bit Forrest of difference James Forrest will be happy with his shift will he not? Yeah I thought Forrest first half looked very lively Especially at the start of the game Gordon um, So I think Kuhn's just a different player to come on He'll he'll like to use that left foot When he comes inside he usually can pick a good pass out Kuhn. I quite I, like him I, I think, think that's a good point the, the change Because Rangers have shown James Forrest so much of the inside Yeah, Coon's comfy in the Coon's left made for it, huh? Even when <laughs> Rangers try and build down the right James Tavernier knows that dies in Maida will be right on him Well, all it takes oh. a replicant Hugh, all it takes is a free kick or anything like that, running about the Celtic penalty yeah. and we just caught a sight of James Tavernier, he's not been involved in this second half but you know what he's capable of uh, free kick, free kick. Free Silver, offside yeah. or a foul? Was it by Silver? Foul, foul, I think. Silver's never get one in that. Johnston looks like he's got to carry on. Yeah, he tends to be quite robust. Or I don't know if they're giving his replacement time to try and get up to match temperature. Won't he was always like as a boy. I've got to. Oh, say. was he back yeah. in the back in the Toronto Canada. days? Yeah. yeah. What was it called again? The soccer academy that you Aurora. worked at. Ar- or, Ar- yeah, so Aurora. what was it called? Aurora. Aurora. Oh, AJ was a good prospect Here's Nicholas Coon's first involvement Oh, oh there's a slip in the box for Rangers Nicholas Coon, oh he's dancing his way in And it's a good block in the end oh. One oh, touch too many yeah. from him What yeah, a start back, could have been I thought one of you might say that Yeah, but not a time to slip there for Yilmaz Comes in, comes in again And then that just that final one he's trying to good beat Davies. Davies Yeah, good tackle See, that's where the danger is now for saying Mark said they're bringing him on. He is comfortable coming on in, in his left foot. So Rangers need to just be wary of that. Oh, yeah, yeah, he must be done now. Alistair Johnson's down again. I wonder if it's that ankle. from that one from tackle. Or was that on his right, no, right I think, foot? I thought it was his other ankle. I thought it was I his could be right. Wrong. I could be wrong. I'll have a... But this could be Scotland's right back for the, yeah. the Euros yeah. coming on. It's bad news, according to Thomas Frank, Aaron Hickey, he says he's not going to make it, but who knows? Well, a big opportunity for him. And uh, So the tackle minutes, was yeah. on Johnson's right ankle. Which one is he holding? Right. right. Is it? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Who knows? If it is that, it might be something different. Well, he's lasted quite well if it is that. Yeah. yeah. It was about half an hour ago, was it not? Um, 20 minutes ago, maybe, in terms of game time. Yeah, Anthony Ralston going to come on. Yeah, well, Fabio Silva not, he's not had a lot of change out of Alistair Johnson today he might fancy it more against Ralston but again it's can Rangers have enough of the ball can they get it that's, to him that's the problem Gordon I think it's getting uh, uh, Silva no fancy it now oh, he's, he's, he's off, off. <laughs> well, someone else can he's have it right yeah. he's got right mate yeah that's not the worst substitution I've seen um, he might just fancy that McCausland go at the left or will right go at the left or right go at the right a right go at the left stop it <laughs> <laughs> am I right or am I wrong <laughs> it's a ball in from Rio Hitati oh just misses Adam Ida at the back post oh, it's, it's a, a foul anyway yeah. Yeah, sorry I think it was Carter Vickers who came round the back in the end but yeah I think it was a free kick initially yeah it was Adam oh, Ida sorry <laughs> bundled into I think you can do that do you mind expect to get away from the post yeah, you wonder what it goes through you know, people's heads in that situation, either running into the back of Diamond and thinking, nobody will see this. If I just <laughs> give him a wee shove here. Well, nope. they must realise. Equaliser on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Hugh, they've got to get up to that bit up there. See where the ball is now. Rangers have got to get in there somewhere. I'll eventually sort of stick up for Hugh in the sense that once you get into that last ten minutes and Celtic haven't oh, looked, throw Celtic everything. haven't looked comfortable when no. being a goal up. Celtic, at times this season Celtic started the second half the, the, the penalty has changed everything 
Um, but do you, you think know, they're playing that differently? I know they've just given the ball there and you'll say yes, but Celt- what, what's changed about Celtic's performance the, the, now? For, no, the, just overall, there's no real threat about them. You know, the, the, the penalty would have finished yeah, the game. Yeah, they've not created since then, I'll accept that. There's no threat about them. And, uh, you know, they've taken off Kyogo now to see if Adam Ida can make any difference. But I'd be anxious if I were in the crowd and expecting Celtic to win the mm. game that would win them the title. I'd be a little anxious. I, I would be anxious if Rangers were knocking the door down. But Rangers, no, but no, but Joe Hart's not had a, a touch of the ball. I don't signal. usually defend Hugh on these things, but mm. once you get the last 10 minutes, I think oh, it's natural. Because yeah. anything at that stage, obviously, and doesn't give you as much time to... Oh. To respond you need to take a little risk with 10 maybe minutes to go and start committing more players forward that could play right into Celtic's hands but if you're going to get back in the game you've got to take a risk because you will never get back into the game the way Rangers are just now yeah here's Dyson Maida he goes past McCausland flashes in corner Celtic yeah good position that from mm. Sterling good play from Maeda. understands who he's up against in that situation McCausland and he flashes it across Sterling Front of six yard Another corner kick I wonder if Celtic just He's well working this short You know Try to drag some Rangers Defenders out of that back line Yeah He does in there now of course So it's an added physical Threat He joins in Liam Scales mm. oh, I don't think Greg short. Taylor was no. ready For the short corner He was Oh, and, oh, oh wow, what a no, touch. no 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 And Rio Hitati can't pull anyone back Because well firstly yeah, It's 2v2 now He can't catch him and oh, Callum McGregor, he's booked as well. What a run this is. Oh, and a brilliant from Callum That's McGregor. Magnificent defender. And then Hatati puts it out for a corner. Oh, he felt it was a goal kick, but yeah, it's going to be a corner. That's great from Callum McGregor because he's, he's booked, isn't he? He can't do anything daft. He's even in, is he in the box. Yeah, he's in the box. And let me tell you, there's oh, nothing more block. difficult when a winger's got a header speed up and he's running at you at full pelt and you're in the box. But this could be it. This is what. Hugh's been saying this is a set piece they've not had anything (laughs) they'll have that shirt off (laughs) if this goes in (laughs) what are you on about it's Hugh that's got the 2-2 Oh, oh so yeah, yeah. Hugh, Hugh's prediction's done already He's a dud Come no, on, no, 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 no I, I tipped two on Celtic Oh so you did Anyway uh, The corner does evade everyone But I think it might yeah, well, it Joe Hart yeah, yeah, it, was it was a touch sorry in the end You, you say there about Magnificent from McGregor I thought it was Magnificent for Scott Wright Scott Wright yeah. Oh yeah, yeah it was He said run, that As he was running the pitch. That's why he should have been on At half time Yeah Mark. Rangers are going to need Something from these Situations Because yeah, they're creating James Tavernier A missile on the pitch yeah. yeah I've seen that coming over Yeah That's just <sighs> Honestly every yeah, that's time a disgrace that? We get fixtures like this Obviously there's, there's been high profile ones at Ibrox in recent times but I can see something else landing at James Tavernier's oh, feet uh, how, Unacceptable how j- Stupid and unacceptable is it? Footballers are putting oh, on a good show all over the place. And it's non-stop Here no, it comes clear. Tavernier, corner kick oh, It's going to be, an, is it another? No, not quite yet oh, It was right aggressive yeah, Here's a one. chance Yeah, Tavernier's trying to find an angle on that right foot Oh, he oh, just chips poor. it into Joe Hart's arms Time to go for Celtic now When they've got them all at one side of the pitch oh, oh, Terrible, terrible. terrible. Oh, It's well done, Greg Taylor Is he penalised for the handball? I think he does He sort of had to gamble and slide in uh, And I think just the handball gives the free kick Should it look a bit nervy here? Yeah, I've yeah, got yeah. to say I'm agreeing yeah. here with you now They've done nothing I'm in the second side, half Except miss a penalty that we won the game for them this might, this might show you what you're you're talking about. Awata yeah. coming on, maybe for Hatati. Yeah, yeah. Hatati has had a very poor afternoon. He's someone who made his name in the old firm game, uh, but he's had a very ineffectual afternoon of it. Would we go as far as poor? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I, I agree right. with that. I've just uh, been quiet. Is that uh, the same thing. Poor. I think it summed it up there Was when they gave the ball away gave the ball away Scott just right? there yeah okay. so, um, this is dangerous so for Celtic we've seen them concede goals oh, yeah. like this yeah. even against Rangers Tavernier can this is where the fans oh it's a great ball as well this is where the fans oh no it's no, not, it's not. It was ah, I'll, just blame, I'll just blame the wind I thought that was dropping right into that area but away it goes Oop. I don't even know if it's windy I'm just right, clutching what? at straws now what do you do <laughs> it's 25 degrees <laughs> oh I could still no be busy oh, I could still Raskin just take the corner flag with him there a couple of Celtic fans try to get a suntan there. Oh. Put the tops back on. Nice boys. day we're in here for six hours. I know, I'm glad I wore this long sleeve top today. <laughs> Roasting. Anyway, Anthony Ralston with the throw in and Rangers need to just even 
who cares if you lose this game 3 1 compared to 2 Gordon? They're, you need to squeeze in and really show some aggression here. They've got to take a chance. Because you need to rely, you need to go more than, oh, well, we might get a set piece, you know, or we might. Yeah. The ball might break to someone, someone might make a mistake. You need to try and force it, surely. Yeah, I think you've got to start committing more people forward. Just take the opportunity at the back, just go man for man all over the pitch and go and try and get back into this game it's your only chance because if this goes for another 10 minutes the league's Celtic yeah, and Rangers a, will know that it's been a really stop start second half yeah, I've, I've, not enjoy, it. I've not enjoyed minutes. the second half I thought the first up, actually yeah, up until I the penalty Celtic were knocking yeah. around fine but until after that it's just been so stop start I've not liked it I thought entertainment's been pretty. and Rangers know that there is no no sign of build up or passing through the lines and down to 10 men makes it harder so Yilmaz is just going to launch this free kick into the box Davies Dessers all the the big men a high line from Celtic it is a high, high line. line and it's not really dealt with as Brendan Rodgers would have hoped mm, I don't know why he, he didn't is it a lot of there didn't header that yeah a look Taylor made just to all of a sudden away. there'll be a space oh, there and half. for Rangers which should oh, oh no it's great, dreadful great play it's tell you what it was a dreadful ball from Diamandi oh, again slices he well. is in the middle of the pitch with 10 yards in front of him and all around him he can move with the ball he can pick a better pass but he goes for a diagonal and miss kicks it almost I think so, he has been poor today Diamandi how many subs has Rangers used? Uh, it, right would, would, McCausland would, would they look at Ruth come on Raskin, Raskin. Yilmaz You'd have to look at Ruth Last 10 minutes Last You know Well he's He's a good finisher Hugh He can yeah. get you something If you can go up the park uh, I still believe There's a goal in this game There you go But you're not saying who to Celtic Oh Oh, oh, oh There's a big chance Adam Eda Three yards out But it just doesn't yeah. It didn't quite settle for him He was crowded out But it's a big opportunity No doubt about it Kemal Ruth is Going to come on For Rangers Yeah 2-2 two, two, Coming up the one thing you would say, Hugh, um, Mark, is it's, a bit, it's certainly a bit more stretched than it was. Oh, because certainly. For, for, I don't know, 25 of the second half, it was like one of those training exercises yeah. where Celtic were camped. It's not like that. Well, Rangers opening up a bit, but they've got the players now. And McCausland and Wright can carry the ball for you. Um, but it's been a bit better for Rangers, you've got to say. In the last five minutes, now they're going to add Roof into the equation. You would keep Dessers on, would you not? Oh, he's taking them off. It's a big chance, that, for Adamida when you see it back, isn't it? Yeah, I, I mean it's great a great ball, ball across the front yeah. Six yard box, Rangers just getting a bit of luck That it didn't quite fall to him I'm with you Mark I, I would have kept this So would I so I'd I'd kept All or nothing now that, that scene, all or nothing You've got seven minutes to get a goal You know, you've got to throw Severe caution at the wind here No, nothing worse than severe caution Oh, here they come now Yeah, the set piece is Falling to Diamandi He's going to have a pop Oh wow It hits Callum McGregor where does it hit him? It might just be one that's windied him. I thought it was one of those lower down ones. Yeah, we all know what that feels like. Um, yeah, that's a Saturday night in if it's that's the case. But I think it, I think it windied him more than anything. He's back up. Yeah, I think he, he, he was it not Karen Vickers who went down there. No, Cal McGregor. McGregor. They look similar. To yeah, the yeah, no, 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 Karen Vickers were getting up off his feet. I see. Ah, he, he got fouled. fouled yeah. Yeah. I yeah, don't even think it was a foul. It was the old centre half following the ball one by a bit of time. He got fouled thirty yards away from. Where Callum McGregor got hit with the ball. Well, he did go down. I was correct. Okay. It's now Celtic going long now, which is quite interesting. You know, they're a, a man to the good, and you think that's yeah. that natural tension that Hugh yeah. speaks about, yeah. though, isn't it? Six minutes to go. In. It's like any level of football, any team. It just it's inevitable that it will seep in eventually. I think the second half performance has been very disappointing. You know that. We can harp on about O'Reilly and the penalty miss. Oh, here's oh, Celtic in on. the box. If it's cut back, oh, Adam oh, What a great defending man. that from Sterling. It is, but is that Nicholas Kuhn arriving? Can yeah. he all lift his head up? And he's got to back. It. Yeah, I think And he's got to happen. I think Kuhn, Kuhn's well, yeah, yeah. Kuhn is all alone. Oh, my goodness. Oh. That's a dreadful decision from. It is, but Adam you've got to give credit to Sterling. How he's managed to yeah, yeah, clear yeah. that over the bar for Central area and his six yard box. Well, uh, the tactical change is maybe working. Matt O'Reilly's corner easily held. Jack Butland, is he just going to launch one? He rolls it out, hoping that Raskin can find McCausland, but it's out of play. They're just, when Rangers have needed to be efficient, Gordon, they just mm. haven't all day long. 
Uh, yeah, I, I think man for man, they've not had a lot of star performers this afternoon. I know it's been difficult since Lindstrom been off. Totally take that on board, but they've been a bit slack and off it for me. I think Celtic have dominated most of the game. Um, but as you quite rightly say, is it 2 1? You're still in it. Uh, there was a good race on there. Maeda tried to get involved. Rangers felt they should have had a foul, but they call them let's play go. And Celtic, it's a bit back to that sort of patient stuff around the edge of the box. I suppose this will be. As the ball comes oh, across Adamida, yeah. and it's another good chance. Well defended, though. Um, was it Ben Davies that yeah, tracked him? Yeah, Ben Davies that time. Uh, Does just enough. It's been a lot of that in the second period. Celtic have had three similar sniffs in about the last five minutes. Yeah. Um, he's done okay today, Davies. Yeah, yeah, I think he's done okay. For a guy that hasn't played, played a lot, any football. yeah, yeah. And a big, big game. I think he's uh, held his own. Yeah, and that's the problem. Rangers See, I don't are, understand that. This that is the long kick from my Jack Butland mind. and it goes to Joe Hart. <laughs> uh, honestly, you, 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 the roof is what five foot. He could go under there with top hat on, oh. right? He's that small. And nah, he's all right in there, though, is he not? No, nah, mm. not against Cara Vickers. Come yeah, on, I suppose. I suppose. The strange thing about this now, Mark, oh. is. Rangers are pressing better now with 10 than they ever did with 11. Yeah, at this stage and they in the need game. to. They actually need to. They need to they force their shoe. This time Celtic's got out. Oh, Taylor's Greg taking Taylor, too long. he's taken way too long, but he gets away with it. He's been fortunate there. Hit I'm surprised. Why is there no 60,000 man on shout? Oh, my God. Oh, he's, he's quick, but he's not that quick and he's out for a corner. Yeah, he does well, though, to carry it St- up, but Sterling's, Sterling's done right. well. Eh? He's one of the guys, remember, I told machine. you that told me what position do you play? Anywhere in the H. That's Sterling. <laughs> He's but anywhere, he can actually do it. He, anywhere in the H, just draw an H on a football pitch and he can play <laughs> every position. It's a great saying. Anywhere in the H. Yeah. We've got to go short with this one. They, they, they throw balls in and. It's a complete waste of time. But they've not even been good with the short ones. Who you remember, Hatati gave the ball yeah, away. And they've done that again. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's the exact oh, same corner kick. from Celtic. Yeah, really poor. Yeah. You're two one up. Down opposition down to ten. Eighty seven minutes. If you're they take it short, you need to keep it. If they do not win this game, the crowd will turn on them big time because they have been a massive mm. disappointment second half did you not say before the game they were drawn it's still Celtic's title oh yeah yeah but, the, so but probably not enough to turn on them though but, then is it but this is throwing it away you know they, they, I thought it was still Cel- you just said it was still still. so what have they thrown away just the game The yeah this the, the, the second half is a, a, an exercise in negligence for me they've found it difficult Hugh I've got to say I think yeah. Celtic have found it difficult to break Rangers down with 10 men um, I, I see it for the first maybe 15 20 minutes, I didn't think they did. I think the game's taking on a different form now. And he's Celtic got to are, watch, he's been booked. Yeah, Celtic he's are making that hard watch. for themselves. Yeah, yeah. That's never a book in that, though, is it? Mm. When the player's back to goal and you get an, he won't get away with many more. No, I no, I don't think he'll get away with many more. Oh, no, it's man round the back. Yeah, Ralston deals it well. And this is where Celtic have to make good decisions because they're breaking forward, Rangers down to yeah. 10 men. But do you go for it? Are you trying to score yeah, again? Of oh, course, without yeah. doubt. Without doubt, you've got um, to. Yeah, and the ball across finds ball. Maeda. And it's in the back of the net. There's a oh, flag on. Oh, hand handball. Handball for offside. Oh, I think he's offside. I think the flag's up. I'm, I'm not 100%. Well, obviously, get a look at it in VAR. He's he got is. the technology. He should never be offside. Oh, dreadful from Maeda. He's so far offside. He just doesn't need to be. I, I wonder if he's not expecting, is it Kuhn to cross it that early? And he's trying to check back. It's a good call. That's, it, your, go- that's your goal that wraps up the title. Yeah, yeah. But as things stand, remember, this Celtic are pretty much going to win the title. They're minutes, of course, they're minutes that, away that's from That's what it. we can't forget. You know, there is no, there is no tragedy in winning this two-one against ten men. Nobody cares. It's about seeing out these next couple of minutes. If they can, we'll see what happens because it goes long from Butland, and again, that's when you're hoping just falls to someone, and it does fall to Raskin. He tries to make it happen, and it's still a little bit. Lacking in control from anyone. Raskin's done quite well since he's come on. Yeah, yeah he's done fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's not a big favourite of the oh, Rangers he's, manager. He is not, just no. Now. It'll be oh. a throw into Celtic. You would have thought, oh no, play oh, goes no, on. Play like coming out. Oh, here we are. Yeah, Rangers just, like we said, it's always unlikely that they find that 
pass, Gordon. It probably has to come from something else. Yeah, it needs something special. They're just looking for somebody to do something special to get them back into this game, get there'll them be, a point. There'll be seven or eight minutes. Seven. 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 Good shout, Hugh. Yeah. Good shout. Well, there always is, isn't there, now in this VAR age? The penalty was quite a long check. Well, it's time now that Rangers just just throw everything at it. And uh, here they are. Oh, here comes Ross McCausland. You can sense the tension from Celtic Park. It's cut Ooh. out. But Callum McGregor slices his clearance. Oh, and I it think... will not fall for a green and white jersey until, of course, Dyson Maeda nicks in. William Scales, great position. Mm. McCausland's in behind the Celtic back line. He's looking to play it across the six yard line. William Scales taking up that front area. I was going to say, I don't know if it just allowed Jack Butland just to play a, a ball up. Eder's got to press him. Mm -hmm. He's got to press him. You can't just allow balls to come on top of you time and time again when you've got an extra man. Good win, Liam Scales. I think that's going to be a free kick to Celtic. That's what they need. Because Rangers are going to be keen. You're going to bundle into someone and mm -hmm. it takes the pressure off when the free kick's given. This is when the five million for Eder looks uh, highly unlikely. Hmm. Well, Celtic, wise there. They've got one man roof rangers up there. Celtic choosing to Terrible. build. But it's a, yeah, yeah, it's it's Celtic Carter Vickers. Look, rattled now. Carter Vickers has given it away. And we know Yilmaz can carry the ball. And he brings in his pal on the other side, James Tavernier. With a shot. Yilmaz from distance. I'm not sure. Mm. Did it take a, a corner? Yeah. Oh, it's a corner. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's, he's delighted about that. Because I don't know if it was a brilliant effort, was it? Mm. I did open up for him. And that's why I'm surprised. Celtic, lack of numbers in that middle area. So when T Tavernier pops into Yilmaz, you know, it just opens up. Now it's Yilmaz going to swing this in. Oh, Butland's oh, up. Oh, what Sick. drama this oh, would be. I can't believe that. That's a bit oh, they need it. Why? They need it. It's a bit well, early. Why? You I well. for what? There's still about five minutes to it's go. So they're losing the game. I and know. if you lose 3-1, it does not matter a jot. There's been some oh. season for Butland. Imagine he scores here. Jack Butland's up. It's towards him. He goes down in the box. And... Uh, Maeda's chasing his own header yeah, away. Yeah. I'm winning it. Oh, it might be a, oh, it's a throw in. It's I a throw was going to say, you don't want to give away free kicks there. The Celtic have been careless with that. Too many free kicks given away, allowing Rangers to gain a bit of territory. And that's when you start feeling under pressure. Yeah, I was going to say, because surely Celtic don't need to sit and invite those long balls, Mark, with the numerical advantage. Oh, no. here we are. Oh, and Celtic no. are through here. It's. Three on two in Celtic's favour. Adam Eda needs to pick the right option. Drags it onto his left and he drags it oh. wide. That was it. That was the title right there for Adam Eda. He drags it wide. He had company. I don't know if it was definitely the wrong option, was it? No, I think he does all right. And by the way, Raskin. Raskin does well enough to force him onto his left. He's but that to, was it. You're right, Gordon. Yeah. Yeah. He's got to do better. Then. Yeah. That's but, poor. That's yeah. poor for me. That's why he's never five million. If he'd scored it, they might have got the checkbook out tonight. That's well, how fickle we are. The yeah. Rangers just wide open now. They're yes. waving four or five up the pitch. And and rightly so. They need to go for it. It's up to Celtic now just to put this game to bed. Yeah, but again, but, this is what I said earlier, the urgency from Celtic. They mm. kind of know that they don't want to do anything daft. Yeah. Well, they're running down the clock now. Because as it stands, Celtic have pretty much won the title. So I know there's a lot yeah. been said because Celtic haven't broken Rangers down. Game management, still Gordon. This yeah. football game. They need to understand if they promote bodies forward and one slack pass leaves you outnumbered at the other end, then it can just derail you totally. And it's Callum like, McGregor like that gives it away. You know, it's so scrappy in possession. In, this, in the middle yeah. third for Celtic, the picking passes, poor. Ranger just about keeping it alive and tell you what Yilmaz does well I assume he wasn't in the team mostly due to fitness today because he's found Ross McCausland as well and oh, Greg Taylor, Taylor oh, Greg Taylor looks out. leggy ball across the face cleared by Liam Scales <sighs> oh, he, he, he needs to get rid of that caravan He'll I can sense the nerves inside bit. Celtic Park from yeah. here yeah. yeah but it's no more than they deserve they've been shabby in the second half they looked the gift horse in the mouth with the penalty kick and now they're holding on it needs to go in the box here. Needs to for. Oh, it's a great ball oh. from Raskin, but it's well defended. What a, by header. Oh, that's a great header. Right, is it Ralston? 
Oh, was you got it? Ah, he's never. Dujon Sterling is Rangers' best player in about four positions, though. I, I would like agree. That, maybe more. That, that's the issue. But how how, how weak is Adam Eder, though? I think that's just credit I, to Sterling. Yeah, there. I think that's terrific defending. Yeah, I agree with you. Such Gordon. energy at this time in the game. Greg Taylor doesn't know why to see this ball in this left back area. He get rid. Beat. <laughs> get rid. Yeah, get it up the, the line. Somebody else chase that. And, it's and this is where Eder, Eder has to press him. Two minutes left. It's a long old season with many twists and turns, but it can be boiled down to this. If Rangers don't score in the next two minutes, the title appears to be over. Even if they get one, it's going to be a long way back, but it would still be a huge boost psychologically. Oh, look at that. <laughs> well, Honestly. is that Anthony Ralston? <laughs> Anthony Ralston. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. not sure he's the man you want in that but, uh, situation. You know what? He's a powerful runner. Just I knock know, it down the line. He didn't know what to do with it. It's mm. you could see it a mile away. Anyth- oh, Greg oh, Taylor looks knackered here. I think he's got sunstroke with the way this oh, last couple of minutes he is. Needs, oh. He needs some after sun on. A minute and a half. Rangers need definitely one goal. Um to have any chance of winning this title you would expect even then it would be a long road back but Philippe Clement said moral victory the last time I think it would feel like it again mm. if they got an equaliser here you would think that Celtic had the 10 men yeah and holding on there isn't there is a still an inevitability about it though we said it isn't there That's see, no use see when from. you're 2-1 up it just happens at every level this is a bit, an extreme oh. example of it what is Anthony Ralston thinking <laughs> <laughs> Let's it bounce about four times. Yeah. Oh, what a touch that is off. Oh, the linesman's flags ruined the touch from Matt O'Reilly who plucked it out of the sky. Yeah, that's that's unforgivable. And he knows it because now it allows Rangers in the halfway line. One more chance. One more chance to launch it. Just laziness getting back across the halfway line. Oh, it's a good flick from Kamar Roof. But Carter Vickers clears and this might be it. This might be and that will be a foul, is it? A foul. No, no. no. That's a throw. No, no. Yeah. That's not a foul. This still might be Oh, is it, is it a throw into Rangers? Yeah. Wow. I thought that was a foul. Oh, it's a great touch. Liam Scales does well. Celtic need to get panic. it clear. Absolute panic. Yeah. yeah. They know how close they They're are. Seconds here. away. Seconds yeah. away from the title. And it can feel that way. Oh, but this is brilliant from Yilmaz. This could be it. He goes right footed. He finds McCausland. Oh, he can't quite find Tavernier. So the seven minutes the are up But as we know It's always a minimum Of seven minutes It's oh, flicked away by time. Ralston But it's not away yet That's a good challenge There's From Kuhn it. As it comes back in Callum McGregor Full time Celtic Park Here's Andrew McLean And Marvin Bartley Celtic 2 Rangers 1 The full time score It may not be mathematically confirmed But the celebrations Inside Celtic Park Tell you That the Scottish Premiership Trophy Will be heading here at the end of the season barring something absolutely crazy happening over the next week or so the Rangers players dropped to their knees as that full time whistle went the Celtic players they would have been celebrating but they were so knackered from the efforts that they put in they were exactly the same but the energy is still there from this Celtic crowd who are around us they're hugging they're waving their flags at the moment they're cheering towards the players and towards Brendan Rodgers who makes his way onto the pitch because this victory means that Celtic will be the champions come the end of this season onto the game and it was a quick start from Celtic they almost took the lead a minute in James Forrest got to the byline cut the ball across the ball hit off John Souter and it came off the face of uh, Jack Butlin and that prevented their own goal it was frantic, it was lively there was openings for both sides Fabio Silva should have done better for Rangers when a cross came in from the right then Matt O'Reilly curled one wide at the other end Jack Butlin then made a huge say low to his left to deny Kyogo but Celtic kept on pushing and they got their opener it was Callum McGregor that was played down the right he turned, he fed in Matt O'Reilly and it was a good strike low to the near post past Jack Butlin to give Celtic the lead they doubled their lead very quickly as well Dyson Maeda down the left he cut it back into the box and it was so poor from John Lundstrom he opened up his foot and directed it into the bottom corner for 2-0 the lead was cut instantly though Borna Barisic with a cross from the left it was headed back across by Dujon Sterling and there was Serial Dessers to flick it in with his head for 2-1 at that point Rangers might have thought that the momentum could have been shifting in their direction but a crazy, crazy moment from John Lundstrom. He careered into a challenge in Alistair Johnson. It wasn't in a dangerous area whatsoever. The studs caught him high on the ankle. A yellow card was the first view from Willie Collum. But 
he was summoned to the VAR screen and a red card followed after that review then it was a penalty Matt O'Reilly took it uh, well sorry that was uh, for the penalty uh, that was for the red card sorry from John Lundstrom then into the second half Willie Collum sent to the screen again because he'd awarded a penalty to Celtic it was after contact from Diamandi on Matt O'Reilly but he stuck to his call this time O'Reilly took it and it was a soft soft penalty that was saved by Jack Butland Celtic had the majority of the ball after that they really didn't create much it became stop start there was a lot of fouls no big chances and as time ticked on it got into the final 10 minutes Rangers pushed forward they tried to create some openings they threw on some subs as well it just wasn't happening for them at all it all got a bit tense when 7 minutes was put up on the board for injury time but Celtic had what it took to see this game out the full time score Celtic 2 Rangers 1 and it was another mad game between these two sides Marvin Bartley and the consequences are very very clear as the Celtic team make their way round and celebrate with the supporters yeah you know the consequence of that game and winning that game or Rangers losing that game rather is shown now you know the Celtic players are going around the stadium every single fan has stayed and they're all on their feet it really was a game of two halves, something that we hear an awful lot. In the first half, obviously, you have all the goals, the tempo and everything else. I think when John Lundstrom gets sent off, it makes the second half probably a little nervy for Celtic because they know that with Rangers being down to 10 men, there's an expectance on them. I don't really think they took the game by the scruff of the neck. Like you said, outside of that O'Reilly penalty, there really wasn't much in the second half. And Rangers, in isolation for that 45 minutes, they could be happy because they contained Celtic. You know, for the 45 minutes, and it had a, you know, a few flashes at the end, but it wasn't enough. You know, the most important thing today for either team was to win this game of football. And Celtic have done that, and now that you know they're going to be champions. Yeah, well, not a single supporter has left this stadium as Celtic make their way round on a victory lap led by Joe Hart, his 150th Celtic appearance today. He's only got three more appearances left for the club if he's to play in their final three games he's lapping it up the whole Celtic team and staff are lapping it up as well and they're trailed by Brendan Rodgers who's taking it all in he's applauding the crowd and they're making their way over to that north curve where the Green Brigade are housed and they're all celebrating together there are flares going off there's a man a few rows in front of me waving his crutches in the air as well these Celtic fans know that they will be coming back here in a week's time to see their club lift the Scottish Premiership trophy once again no it's not mathematically confirmed but with Celtic six points ahead they've got that significant goal difference as well in the title race it means that surely Celtic will be crowned champions after a game that had absolutely everything today another classic game between these two sides for the full time score with Celtic 2 Rangers 1 Scottish football's lead leader this is Clyde One Super Scoreboard the dust won't settle at Celtic Park for quite some time because a 2-1 win over 10 man Rangers means Celtic are 6 points clear and 7 goals better off with the 2 games to play You are famed For your bold predictions Hugh Keevans Celtic are pretty much Champions aren't they Yeah and I tipped 2-1 Celtic So you What can, a man You can put mm. All your complaints Back in the box um, They got there In the end First of all You have to say That they deserve To be the champions And that they will Ensure that status At Clamarmac On Wednesday night uh, For Brendan Rodgers It's a personal triumph He came back a man unwanted by a section of the support, loved by the other half of the support, but today he has re-ensured his place in Celtic's history. Only one defeat in 17 matches against Rangers. Uh, he may have been hanging on towards the end of this one. They may have been very disappointing in the second half, Celtic, and they were. But they are over the line. It is now a matter of when and where it is all formalised. Rugby Park must be good for a point, at least surely on Wednesday. Then they have a a game against uh, St Mirren at Celtic Park, which will be party day. So, in the end, they got there. They made hard work of it second half, but there is no way that they lose the title now. Another title in the bag, Mark Wilson. I feel... Sort of daft asking I take it everybody just thinks it is We spoke about it being a must win for Rangers before 
Um, it needs to get formalised as Hugh says But Celtic did their job today Oh without doubt And the players would have known what was on their shoulders The pressure going to Celtic Park With the expectation The fans expecting them to run over the top of Rangers With Rangers injury problems And it doesn't always pan out that way And the game this afternoon Took so many twists and turns within that 90 minutes it Kind of resembled the season you know, from Celtic starting strong to Rangers sacking our manager to Rangers then having a real strong period and Celtic a bit of a wobble to Celtic finishing strongly. But today was about getting three points. Doesn't matter how they did it today. It could have been 1-0. It could have been an own goal, which it was an own goal. It wins the game. It doesn't matter. Three points was the important thing. You know, the points difference, the goal difference, the league title is Celtic's. Yeah, I agree with Mark. I think it was all about the three points today for Celtic. Just to cement that, take a bit of pressure off, especially their next game. Everybody looks at that and thinks it'll be a real difficult fixture down at Kilmarnock. Um, but they got the job done today. Second half, they struggled a little bit, created some good chances, but against 10 men, and credit to Rangers second half, they dug in deep, kept the game going, but... Uh, Celtic ran out worthy winners Marvin Bartley joins us he's still at Celtic Park Marvin I take it it feels like a title winning day there yeah definitely you know it feels like they've, they've actually done it now I know it's listen, still mathematically possible for Rangers to catch them but as we're speaking about there the goal difference it, it, it's game over and every single Celtic fan is going out of here smiling they weren't smiling too much in the second half it was, it was very very nervous but you know as the guys are saying there it's about getting the three points and Celtic have done that of course, we have big three o'clock games coming up as well. The top team round the grounds. Let's bring them in on this first of all, because it's a seismic day. Roger Hanna, that's with no disrespect to Hearts against Dundee, which is big in its own right. But we've enjoyed a title race. It was tighter than it's been. I take it today's the day it ended. Yeah, we need to say congratulations to Celtic Gordon. They are the SPFL Premiership champion. It's three in a row. And listen, the bedrock of this title win has been 10 points from 12 against Rangers. That, that's what's won it for Celtic. That's what's lost it for Rangers. People talk about that horrific week for Rangers of Ross County and Dundee, but it's this ongoing inability to beat Celtic and beat Brendan Rodgers that has cost them again. They've been let down by indiscipline. Leon Balligan, if you remember, sent off at Celtic Park at New Year. John Lundstrom sent off before half-time today just when serial deathers had given Rangers a, a, a sort of lifeline. And, you know... When Philip Clement looks to next season, if he's going to challenge for the title next season, he will need an overhaul in the summer and he will need players with the metal and the mental strength to take on Celtic home and away. The Rangers Derby record in the top flight is beyond miserable. They need to find a way to stop Brendan Rodgers having fun in this fixture. Well, I don't know if the second half would have been fun in its own right, Fraser Wisher, but it will be now. I think, look, Celtic went into this season as title favourites, they certainly started the season as title favourites, there was a slight wobble in the middle, then they regained the favourites tag and it looks like that's them over the line. Yeah, definitely over the line, I don't think it's too early to say that they've won the, they've won the title, congratulations to Celtic, well deserved and for Brendan Rodgers I think he'll be absolutely delighted, there was a couple of times where he was getting a wee bit irked at the, the criticism of his team and the performances etc but I think we spoke about it two or three weeks ago about who was going to go and win the title I think you know, I remember saying I just felt that Celtic had more match winners in their squad and, and so it's proven guys like Atati coming back has made a difference O'Reilly has been outstanding they've had Kyogo Forrest all these guys as well and they've had more options as well so just a better squad all round and for, for Rangers you know the, the chance is gone I, I, I didn't see much of the game but I saw the, the big decisions and, you know, for John Lundstrom to do that, allow the adrenaline and the excitement of that equaliser, it's, it's given Rangers a real lift. He didn't need to go into the challenge. He didn't need to go into the challenge at all. He did really well to close Johnson down. He's facing his own goal, just stand on your feet. He had shown back the park, but uh, at that point, it was all over for Rangers. Because Celtic with 10 men, playing in front of a huge crowd as well. Celtic, sorry, with 11 men playing against 10. They were always going to win the game. So from, from that point of view, I think, sure, Philip Clement will just say, why did you go in for that challenge? Never mind the actual challenge itself. You didn't need to go into it. But it's all about Celtic today. They have won the title, and deservedly so. And as Roger says, a big overhaul, I think, for Rangers over the summer. A huge number of players going to come in and out. Yeah, David Feel, it's hard to look past Roger Hanna's point. The, the head-to-heads can play a part. There was a stage there where you thought maybe Celtic could actually have a superior head-to-head against Rangers this season and still not come out on top, but they've blown that apart, 10 points, and that is why they have this advantage going into the last two games. 
Yeah, you're right, Gordon, for a, for a spell when Rangers were on that really good run, you did wonder where they would have to beat Celtic to win the title, but I think it eventually catches up with you. I think in any season of Celtic, all Rangers are going to take 10 points out of the Derby fixtures, then I think they're going to have a great chance of winning the league. Probably won't go down as the most stylish title winner, Brendan Rodgers, two spells at Celtic, but probably one of the most satisfying for him, just in terms of different challenges, injuries, players leaving, a bit of unrest behind the scenes at the club. Um, that he's managed to get Celtic over the line and I also, speaking about the overhaul Rangers are coming I also think Brendan Rodgers will get to work in the summer I genuinely do think he'll sign three or four players and this time Celtic won't mess about the projects I think Celtic will go and try and go to the next level under Brendan Rodgers now And that's the thing, Mark Wilson every title is, is different and, and means something in its own unique sense Yes, if you run away with it and you romp it and then people then the scene say wow, that was a vintage team and we were excellent but they're no sometimes the most enjoyable ones are the ones where you've been doubted or you've been written off or you've had a bit of adversity so yeah. people can knock themselves out comparing this Celtic team to others but sometimes they're the more enjoyable oh, without ones without doubt uh, because it's a real roller coaster of emotions and I think Brendan Rodgers has experienced that for the first time in his Celtic career um, day one you know out there in the steps saying to his own supporters come back here in May and see me now He's put it out there. He has to back it up. So there's no doubt he would have felt the pressure when things were starting to turn. And that's why you heard the Mike Fraser said a bit irked sometimes in post-match press conferences. But he had to dig deep. And it's probably one of the first times he's had to really dig deep against a Rangers manager who looks like he knows what he's doing. And, it, and it's going to be a real challenge again next season. And I agree with David. The transfer window will be huge. We always chat about it. But I do believe that Brendan Rodgers will sign some of his own players and how he wants to play because let's remember it's never going to be easy for anybody coming in and following Ange Postacoglu and the imprint that he had in Celtic so whoever did it had to make a big impression it's maybe went, taken a bit longer than Brendan Rodgers would have hoped but a title certainly helps so the title all but wrapped up for Celtic and the phone lines are going to open nice and early for you to react so get them in right now if you can 0141 951 1025 we have covered a lot of miles getting up to this point it looks like it's done so what do you make of it both sides give us your thoughts please on 0141 951 1025 and team news from the 3 o'clock games coming next the team with the biggest support in Glasgow and the West. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. You join us on the day Celtic pretty much wrapped up the Scottish Premiership title and we are here for you as always. Whether it's the first day of the season or the day that the title's almost sealed, we want your thoughts. So 01419511025, the calls are on get all your thoughts into us please we do have big games at three o'clock thanks to var and all the stuff that goes into it we're pretty late on these so i'm sure the guys out there will keep this brief let's get team news from let's start closest to home in the remaining games st mirren kilmarnock with fraser wishart yeah sometimes late it's not a bad time to to come to as though god and the atmosphere really building kelly fans to my right hand side have filled that away end we know it's almost a sellout crowd, there's just a handful of tickets left this morning and yet again St Mirren fans turning out in great numbers for what's a, a big game for the team of course, a wee bit to play for yet Saints beating Dundee puts them in the position to grab 5th place, Kelly will be playing European football, will it be Europa League probably, will it be Conference League, that, that's a, another possibility, the results have gone Kelly's way in this fixture in the last wee while, you've got to go back to 2021 for a St Mirren victory and the difference really between the two teams now, 6 points is that game a couple of months ago when St Mirren were 2 up and Kelly came back to score 5 to win that game and that's the difference between the teams today so expect it to be tight hopefully a few goals for this big crowd really good to see such a big sellout crowd here between two of our teams that have done so well this season St Mirren unchanged 3-4-3 formation from the Dundee game last week Zach Hemmingham's goals Jim Bolton Alex Gogic and Marcus Fraser at the back Ryan Strain Mark O'Hara Cullen Boyd Munson Scott Tans across the middle with Colin May and Mikhail Mandon and Toyosi Olesanya as the forward line substitutes for St Mirren Peter Orminski Richard Taylor James Scott Keanu Bacchus Charles Dunn Jaden Brown Lewis Jimison Evan Mooney and Elvis Womono for Kelly they just the one change Joe Wright sent off Iberts last week of course is suspended and in comes Robbie D so 4-4-2 Will 
Will Dennison, goals Mayo, right, Lewis Mayo, Robbie D, Stuart Finlay and Corey and Daba at the back. Dan Armstrong, Liam Donnelly, David Watson and Matty Kennedy make up the midfield with the two strikers, Kyle Vassell and Marley Watkins. Kieran O'Hara, Rory McKenzie, Fraser Murray, Innes Cameron, Tom Davis, Greg Stewart, Liam Polworth, Gary Mackay Stephen and Kevin Van Veen are the substitutes and the referee in Paisley is Ewan Anderson and VAR. Hope we don't see much of him, Greg Aitken. Let's do a quick fly around the other venues as well. Let's go from near to far, Ross County, Motherwell, David Friel. Yeah, lovely day in Dingwall. God in Ross County owner Roy McGregor shouted squeaky bum time up to the press box earlier on, but this place is a fortress these days, so he should be pretty confident. County are on a six game unbeaten run here. They've beaten Hearts, Hibs, Rangers along the way. Don Cowie has clearly brought a lot of stability after the chaos of the Derek Adams reign, and County are now favourites to avoid that relegation playoff place. They're two points above St Johnston before a ball is kicked today. Another home win would clearly set them up perfectly for their big visit to Perth in midweek. They lost 5 0 at Motherwell back in February. That signalled the end for Derek Adams. But they're in a far better place right now. That's from Motherwell. We thumped Livingston 4-1 last weekend and are trying to catch Aberdeen and Hibs above them. Shot Kettwell, he's a Ross County legend. He was playing the manager here but won't be out to do them any favours at all today. He's desperate for another win. I'll run through the two teams. Sorry, Ross County. No changes in either team. Ross laid law in goals. Back three of Will Nightingale, Jack Baldwin and Ryan Leake. Michi Affetti, Conor Randall, Eli King and Josh Reid across the middle with Gian Danda in behind Eamon Brophy and Simon Murray. Subs for Ross County are Wickens, Sims, Latoury, Harmon, Henderson, Keller, Jenks, White and Ayena. Asso Motherwell unchanged as well. Liam Kelly and goals back to you have Dan Casey, Paul McGinn and Shane Blaney. Midfield four of Stephen O'Donnell, Andy Halliday, Lennon Miller and Georgie Gent. Blair Spittle and Sam Nicholson in behind Theo Bear. Subs for Motherwell, Oxborough, Mugabe, Peyton, Dravkovsky, Shaw, Devine, Moses, Ferry and Butcher. The referee in Dingwall is Kevin Clark. Fancy and the VAR is Matthew McDermott. Let's keep going then. The capital for Hearts against Dundee with Roger Hanna. Or oh, maybe not. Technological issues as you can hear. Livy St. Johnson with Gabriel. Yes, Gordon, we've just seen the two titles at the top go at it. Now it's time for the battle at the bottom. It's 11th versus 12th here at a hot Almond Vale Stadium. It's the already relegated Livingston just playing for pride now in their Premiership farewell. They're 10 points adrift. There will be no great escape here. They've lost seven of their last 10 and they can have no complaints. They've simply not been good enough this campaign. But David Martindale and his men say they're already focusing on returning from the Championship in 12 months' time have to see about that next season. Now just two changes from last weekend's loss at Motherwell. Teta Yengi and Christian Montano come in for Ayo Obilai and Dan Mackay. Looks like it's going to be a 4-4-2 formation as well. Shamal George in goal. A defence of Michael Nottingham, Mikey Devlin, Sean Kelly and Christian Montano. Jamie Brandon, Jason Holt, Stephen Kelly and Scott Pittman across the middle. Bruce Anderson is up top with Teta Yengi. The substitutes Wright, Carson, Obilai, Mackay, Bradley, Sangare, Shinny, Guthrie and Sharp. But it's a totally opposite for the visitors, St Johnston. It's simply a must win for them, battling down at the bottom. And they've picked the wrong time to lose form, Gordon. Won just once in their last seven games. It's the first time they've been in the relegation places this year. Two points adrift of Ross County. They'll be watching the Staggies versus Motherwell closely before the two teams meet in McDermott Park on Wednesday night. Craig Levine makes four changes to his team from last weekend at Income Kelpians. McPherson, May and Sidibe. So it'll be Dimitar Mitov in goal, a defence of Ryan McGowan, Liam Corden and David Kelchins. A Dre White and Graham Carey will be out wide with Cameron McPherson and Daniel Phillips in the middle. Nicky Clark, Stevie May and Adam Sidibe will play up top. Substitutes, Richards, Considine, Chayasimi, Kuchurievi, Olafunwa, Kimpioka, Faschek and both of the Smiths. The referee, Sean Beaton and the VAR is Gavin Duncan. All three games this season have ended in a draw, Gordon. Will we see another one this afternoon? Kickoff is four minutes away. It feels like we're just confirming things today or, or moving closer. We've done it with the title, most notably of all. But the rest, you know, Hearts are, well, they are nailed on for third. Yeah. St Mirren, Kelly, it looks like the order of things is already settled. Well, maybe, you may be getting the odd dramatic movement here or there, but it's really about the bottom, isn't it? Well, absolutely. Uh, it's about Ross County playing Motherwell. It's about St Johnston uh, against Livy. How much is relegation taken out of Livy? Are they now in the departure lounge for their holidays or are they interested in a game against St Johnston? We'll find out very, very quickly, but... That is an important factor in that game. Let's do team news from St. Castle with Roger Hanna. Sunny day in the capital here, Gordon. And three changes on our side in the capital. It's a return for Craig Gordon in goal for half, along with Alan Forrest and Barry Mackay. Outdrop 
Frank kick 10, Xander Clark and George Grant. So it's Craig Gordon and goal back four to the Dexter Limbic Kisa, Kai Rolls, Stephen Kingsley and Alec Cochran. The midfield holders of Benny Beningame and Cammy Devlin. Then Alan Forrest, Barry Mackay and Kenneth Vargas behind Lawrence Shanklin. On the bench, Clark, Kent and Grant, Oda, Civic and Denham, Fraser, Tagawa and Wilson. As for the day, three changes as well from last week's home defeat to St Mirren, including a first start for centre-half Ryan Ashley. Malachi Boateng and goal scorer Michael Mellon, all in Lamy, Silla and Tiffany go out. So it's John McCracken in goal, Antonio Fatales, Ryan Ashley and Aaron Donnelly at the back. The midfield five, Jordan McGee, Lyle Cameron, Malachi Boateng, Luke McCown and Owen Dodgson. And up top, Michael Mellon will partner Amadou Bakayoko. On the bench, it's Sharp, Tiffany and Main, Mulligan, Robinson and Robertson, Howley, Silla and Costello. The referee is Nick Walsh and our bar is David Dickinson. Looking forward to the three o'clock games. The kickoffs are coming next and perhaps more importantly for some of you, the chance to react to the day that Celtic pretty much became champions. 01419511025. Call now. We'll get you on next. The Clyde One Super Scoreboard Podcast With Lucas Land Rover Looking to sell your Land Rover? Contact them today for a no obligation quotation James is locked out of his house (laughs) He was taken out the bins when the door blew shut And now he's stuck there in just his pants and an apron (laughs) He had a lasagna in the oven, so that'll be charcoal soon And his new girlfriend's on the way With her parents (laughs) To meet him for the first time Uh... But with tons of original titles from his favourite comedians, he's <laughs> laughing through it with comedy on Audible. Subscription required. See audible.co.uk for terms. Sounds like someone's lowered prices with their Tesco Club card. Like an 800 gram loaf of Hovis Best of Both Bread for just 95p down from £1.25. With Tesco Club card, everyone can feel the to lower prices. Tesco, every little helps. Majority of larger stores ends 20th of May. Club card or app required. 